Yeah, I just... Oh, man. These, those are the moments that scare me when I get a PC. I'll definitely be going to you guys for a lot of help because, yeah, <laughs> if something crashes, I'm sure I'll be freaking out. <laughs> yeah, well, Ice, Ice Moose was actually freaking out. Uh, I know. Because I don't know what she, <laughs> she did to my uh, windows. She's like, you gotta help me. I gotta get back to Windows 10. She's like... I, know. I don't like Windows 11. I'm like, well, unfortunately, you say most of these new computers are going to be running on Windows 11, and Windows 11 is garbage. <laughs> I know I work Complete with his mom. Complete fucking trash. I work with his mom, and I always tell him that. I was like, yeah, I said, thank God he made a good friend in the Discord community, because every time he has a computer problem, this uh, this one uh, member of the community is able to fix it for him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I didn't know you didn't, uh, you knew each other like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, well, I work with his mother, right? Um, and then that's how we kind of met each other. And then, yeah, he was uh, just saying that, you know, he's a little bit lonely playing video games. I was like, well, like, you know, tell him to join the Discord community. Like, well, we'll definitely make a lot of friends that way. Gotcha. But yeah, um, <laughs> hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody. <laughs> this is the Two Tired Dudes podcast. Uh, once again, Rebel, thank you for hopping in the chat. I appreciate it. If you want to jump into any point of the conversations that we're going to be having, by all means, uh, feel free to. Or you can be like Sheila and just hop up here on the panel and uh, have a conversation with us. Uh, if you're interested, just let me know and I can send you the Discord link. You're more than welcome to join. If not, like I said, I'll read out your messages um, as they pop up during chat. Or at least do my best to. I know there's some moments where it gets kind of crazy in there. Um, on this episode, we're going to be talking about uh, the game that currently uh, Sheila has been playing, actually. <laughs> the Hellblade. No, I actually downloaded which I'm at 97%. Oh, darn. I thought you got a few hours into it already. Shoot. No, no, <laughs> no. No, no oh. I thought I could, but no. Because oh. I tried to download it to my app. He's like, you have no connection to your PC. I'm like, what? Oh, darn. Well, that's okay, because you did play the first one, so at least you'll have a good opinion on that one. Um, when we all bounce into that conversation again. Uh, but yeah, so yeah. we're going to be talking about uh, Hellblade 2. Um, basically, just the gist of it is, like, we wanted to talk about if uh, a short game is still a good game. You know, like, what, what point um, does a game become bad or you know is or i guess in this case uh if you're in canada it's 70 dollars, or if you're in the states it was a 50 dollar price tag on that game you know what what value um do you want to get out of that price tag um there was also uh in current news we had uh the pa ps2 game sorry coming to the ps5 uh library um so there's been a few it looks like confirmed titles um I don't know. The first post I saw, maybe it was more speculation of what they were hoping for. And then I did notice that there was uh, three now and a couple other posts that have been uh, fixated on. Uh, one of them being Spider-Man 2, I believe, from the PlayStation 2. No, uh, it was the original Spider-Man. Or original Spider-Man, sorry. It was the original Spider-Man yeah. from the PS2 you put on there. Yeah, sorry, um, original Spider-Man. So that one looks like that was actually confirmed um, as one of the games that will be coming um, in that package. And um, I know on the Discord I was kind of um, uncertain, but it looks like it has been confirmed that that will be part of your PS Plus uh, library. So um, at least we know how you guys are going to be getting a hold of all those, which means no extra costs, which is great for gamers. Um, and it gives a little more value as to why you're paying that extra um, chunk of money. You know, we took PlayStation a year to show it, but it's, here's the start of it. <laughs> um, yeah. Classic titles are your thing. Yeah, 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 that too, right? If you, hey, if you actually want them. Um, but yeah, I was going to say, I got I got Sheila here today. I got JW here um, in the chat. Um, yeah, so Sheila, you've been on for a while. What have you been up to? People, I think it's been... Gosh, maybe a couple months since you've been on an episode? Yeah, well, <laughs> I've been... Well, besides the lovely two days after my birthday, you know, the whole car crash thing and oh, I had a car wash, nonetheless. It's been a little bit of a hectic, uh, uh, I guess, couple of months. Uh, it's taken them um, about seven days to do the police report. 
Um, wow. So I can't even, they can't even touch my car until they get the police report and I sent it to my insurances. But that's like a whole thing in itself. Um, but you yourself, right? You were okay? Right. Like you didn't get any like uh, major injuries? Yeah, I didn't get injured by the skin of my teeth and basically having an angel on my side. Oh, so, that's yeah. good. I'm glad you get hurt. Uh, if that concrete, because that, if that concrete wasn't there, I'm telling you right now, the woman ran her car and took my whole entire door and me with it. Wow. I was, yeah. Yeah, it was like that. It was like pretty much like that. It was, yeah. That's ridiculous. Like, what was she doing? Was she just speeding and didn't see you or? No, she was coming out of the conveyor belt of yeah. the car wash. You're supposed to go from neutral to park and slowly go into the vacuum area if you're going to vacuum your car. Okay. And um, she went full gunmoke on the gas, got the whole vacuum unit, and uh, basically took it out of here from my car. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, what an idiot. Holy. Oh, glad I said, glad you're okay. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, but other than that, you know, try and get back into streaming. It's just been. That's too right. Hectic. No one knows about your big stream you did uh, with your uh, mix of games. You, uh, because you never got a chance to talk I'm about that one. Games. Yeah, I remember you had what was it? Was it ten different games you had there in total with Naughty Bear? You played? Oh yeah, I had. Uh, I had what was it? It was Naughty Monkey, which Naughty Monkey is not going to be a game that I, I will stream. That <laughs> game was too much fun. <laughs> but oh my god, I was having too much fucking fun, not knowing what the hell I was doing. All I know is I was beating be the shit out of the the freaking bears and having the police officers come after me then i'm not gonna share the police officer running for my life so yeah it was good yeah no, that was a really funny game <laughs> um what was another game that i gotta bring live a live a life that's it was also another good game Did you end but, up finishing uh, Undertale? There was only a couple on the stream. Did you end up finishing Undertale, uh, Sheila? I know you even played it a little bit again. No, I got stuck by the freaking spider monkey. Aww. Yeah, I know you've been working on that one for a little bit too, trying to wrap it up. Yeah, and I had to take a break and... I figured out what the problem is. It's basically my controller. It didn't like uh, when you would try to feed a pet. It wouldn't bounce for me. So oh, okay. I had to do it by keyboard and mouse. And it worked better. So I might finish that part after that. But other than that, pretty much good. Can't complain. Everything is going to go right sooner or later. And I, I guess Manhunt will be one of the newer games they're going to be starting. Uh, yeah, maybe that's the one that I want to sub. <laughs> well, I also want to do a uh, Prison Break, which is uh, oh yeah, Prison Break. And awesome. uh, the twenty four game, uh, the twenty four. You remember the TV series? Yeah, I sure do. They actually made a video game from it, and they. Actually Oh, nice. Yeah, I think I remember you see, see that one of your piles that you would uh, showcased. Hey, Foxy. Yeah, uh, Metal Gear Solid. I, got, I did so many. I, I need to literally, like, just take, like, a six-month vacation and, like, lock myself in my room. And, yeah. <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. <laughs> And uh, did did you have like any um, upcoming streams that you're planning? Any other big events? Um, not really. Not at the moment. Oh, that's all right. 
And uh, JW, I guess this is the big exciting moment because now we get. Oh, well, if you're okay with it, Sheila, because it might be a few spoilers. I don't know. Uh, but it's yeah, the yeah, the, the end of the chapter for Stellar Blade. <laughs> uh, there, <clears throat> there's no problem. I can keep it spoiler free. But yes, I did finish the Stellar Blade game, and uh, I've been I've started the new game plus one as well. And it's it's great. Uh, like, there's nothing new to say that I've already not said in the previous podcast, really, where, you know, it, it's almost a perfect game. If it, it was, like, better written and, um, well, I would say better acted as well, but, I mean, that's what you get from playing an Easter game on English dubs, really, so... Uh, well, I'll let it pass, let's say, and <laughs> like if if it had if it had a bit more information to give in the main quest, because there's a bunch of information that are important to the plot, but that you learn through the data that you either gather along the game or okay. from information that you read up on characters in the menu screen. Like it's not even said in the cinematics or anything. Like there's a, I won't say it because it, it's a pretty a major spoiler, but like there's something like I didn't know that is super important to the story that I only knew once reading through the character uh, bios, if you want. Because the character bios update as you go through the game. Oh, okay, okay. So it's not like so, um... so if it. It's not like a Bethesda game right? like, where, you're, where you're reading the emails on the computer, right? You're getting more from the story. Like, you're actually digging into the character's bio itself to find out information? Well, uh, like, you know, what I mean? you know, in any game, there, there are bios written for characters, right? Their the, uh, description. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, this character is, uh, I don't know. This character is mindful. He's a streamer and and also works at blah, blah, blah you know, right? Yeah, yeah. This a sort of resume of the character. So as you go through the game, this updates because you learn new stuff through the main quest. Oh, and, okay, okay. And so there's some stuff on certain characters that I learned only like through reading those that I think should have been part of the main story. Like it was really stupid that. It it wasn't part of the main story because yeah. it wasn't obvious. No, yeah, 100%. like I would have never known. That's yeah, and um, that's a weird way of doing it. But yeah, so yeah, <laughs> it, it's weird. So if it if it was better at presenting its information, it would be a perfect game, I think, because the the world building building itself is really good, like the visuals and the story behind the items you find and everything. And um, yeah, no, g gameplay wise, it's a blast of all the combos and all that. The thing that is really cool actually is that the new game plus uh, offers a lot of add-ons. So basically you don't, not only you do the game with um, all the stuff that you've you know, gathered from your first game. But there are new skill trees that are unlocked. Well, not skill trees, more like branches that are expanded that you can upgrade through your new game plus. Oh, okay. And also, you find new uh, gears and equipment to make your character stronger. And you get, you, you can find a bunch of new costumes and alternate versions of the costumes that were from the main game so from the main game there's like maybe 30 to 40 costumes i would assume <laughs> or maybe it's total i don't i'm not sure anyway basically you can find the same amount of costumes i think or around the same amount so there it makes you want to go through the game and explore everything and um which is cool, but at the same time, I th I find it it's a, a double-edged sword because I often don't like to do immediately after like a second playthrough. Yeah. 
or uh or i because i i usually when i do my first playthrough i do everything right then then i'm done so when i do a second playthrough i usually just play through the story because i want to get to certain parts or i want to change the choices i did the previous run right yeah want to try other choices so in that sense if you it's cool that you have a bunch of new stuff to unlock, but at the same time, I don't know if I want to commit as much as I did on my first playthrough. So there is some stuff where I'm a bit annoyed and that uh, I think like I won't do. For example, you have, you you can collect like 49 cans in, in the game. They're collectibles, right? Okay. And for that, you get uh, various items, but along the path but at the end you get uh, a costume now if you redo the same thing in the new game plus you get a an alternate version of that costume a different color okay okay and i don't think i'm going i want to go and find every 49 cans again like i, I don't remember all 49 locations right <laughs> yeah that's a lot to so, do again so I I have a question. Still bleed. You could you could fast travel, which does make going from one place to the other very easy. Correct? Yeah, sure. But it's not um, every camp where you can uh, fast travel. Like there are some camps that don't have fast travels or don't have certain equipments. Because basically, you have like two kinds of camps in Star Like you have like the um, airborne sort of camps where they are the big main camps where you have all the uh, options that you 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 would want to have so the skill upgrades buying items upgrade and the place to repair and upgrade items and stuff and a rest place but it, there are smaller scavengers camp where they lack all some some stuff so sometimes they lack fast travel sometimes they lack the thing to upgrade your 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 repair and upgrade your stuff so it depends of the of the camp mm. but yeah no the the maps aren't i mean they're they're a good size but they're not too big either so and you can remember but it's just i don't want to run after all all these collectibles again like i've already done them even <laughs> though they're promising me another costume right no, I agree, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah gotcha. a lot to do. Again, <laughs> I, I have a question, J uh, J W. Did you ever play the Mad Max, the game, the video game? Yes, I've worked you... on it actually. <laughs> oh, you did? Yeah. Yes. I did not know you worked on that game. That's what. Yeah, the yeah, I worked as a quality. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I worked on a quality assurance on that game, so I tested it to make sure to to catch the bugs, basically. And it gotcha. was my first project as a QA, actually. Gotcha. I did not know that. But yeah, no, it's a great game. I, I really like, beside testing it uh, as a game, it's a very fun game. Uh, it was, I think, underappreciated when it came out because it came out alongside uh, multiple big titles at the time, I think. Like, I, I think, think uh, one of the times where Grand Theft Auto would shut by basically when that path is still actually playing the Man Mask game. Yeah, it, it came out around the same time as Metal Gear Solid 5, I think. Well, if I remember correctly... You see, Metal Gear Solid games, uh, the thing with me is they never put a map. So I always was the one who did not know which direction to go in as ever. You, as you say, the funny part was, uh, if I remember correctly, JW, you said there was actually like multiple um, dates that they were picking for a release, right? But wasn't it like there was always some big title coming out and they couldn't pick yeah, that? Yeah, that year, yeah. <laughs> that sucks. Oh, man. Yeah, so they just had to pick one and they did. And yeah, it... Uh, underperformed i guess well i mean it still was luckier than most games i would i would say because yeah. originally it was supposed to be a movie tie-in right so a game that were uh 
going to be connected to the movie Fury Road, and that um, it's going to it would have come out around the same time, but in the end, uh, I don't think there was anything concrete, or they didn't come up with anything good, and they decided to do to let it be its standalone own thing, the video game. I mean, uh, beside the uh beside the um the movie yeah so it would use some of the same assets location and all that which is why if you looked at the Fur furiosa trailer you can recognize gas town and a bunch of other of these location that you see in the mad max video game you oh. can see, see from the trailer it's they're using the same locations and uh, Mii's asset and all that. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, that's another game that I gotta get back on and, or, well, finish it because it was so long and there was so si many side missions to yeah. get like certain things <laughs> that it was just draining me out for one way or another, but. You know, I didn't want to give up on that game because I did enjoy it. And the racing was a great thing, but it was just too much time for me. I understand that. Like, uh, I have trouble with open world games in general. Like, after 50 hours, I usually stop playing them in general. Or, like, between 20 to 50 hours. Yeah. I use, at some point, I, it's almost as if I see the gameplay loop and then I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm good, right? It like it needs to be particularly good, I think, to get me stuck on it until I do everything, I think. There are very few that do, do that. You know, I loved Ghost of, uh, Ghost of Tsushima game, but I finished it because after 50 hours, I, I just, <laughs> I stopped playing, right? <laughs> But it's, I have no, not a lot of bad things to say about that game. It's a very good game, you know? Uh, you're just like me that, you know, you need to move on. Your, your, your brain can't handle any more of the, like, the animation of, like, okay, like, what is this going to be over? Well, the, the problem is what I should do is do the quests that I want, so... Do a couple of side quests, but mainly stick to the main quest. And then, if I like it enough, go back and do all the other side stuff, right? But my mind does, yeah. doesn't does want to do that. It wants to do everything before moving on. So I do everything, every little side small stuff on the way or on the, you know, parts of the island before moving to the next part. And... Like you say, it's very draining at some point, and you sort of lose track and and just disconnect, right? That's well, so for factor. me, it's like, hey, I have so many other games that I want to uh, at least play or maybe somehow finish, and it's just like, nah, that's never will happen. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and uh, you know, and there there are some exceptions. Like I think Horizon is one of the only open worlds where I've put hundred of hours and a hundred hours and more, and just did everything in it because I just thought the world was that that interesting and super interesting. Well, you see, Horizon, I really enjoyed that game. Yes, the boss fight was difficult. And, you know, the animatronics and, you know, you had to be stealthy. That game was a great game. Also, uh, I know uh, I have beat this game. It's a vampire game. It is called... Now it is not coming up, but it was that uh, he was a doctor, 
Between the 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 story was uh, around the plague time. Oh, vam uh, vampire. It's vampire. Yeah, vampire, vampire. Oh, yeah, that's a great game. Oh, yeah, yeah. That game I beat and I did enjoy it. Yeah, me too. I still gotta try it. <laughs> so, I'll, yeah, well, absolutely, because it's an ori a very original vampire game. Like, a, there, there's no two of two like Vampire, I find, because yeah. of its social mechanic that is very interesting. But and, I also uh, like the fact that you could be a bad vampire and do things like. On the bad end, or do you want to be a good person and try to save the whole country? Let's just say. So okay. I like that factor as well when it came to Vampire, because that was like an original feature, you know. Because, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. not many games do it, but it also changes the storyline, uh, and how you get respected. And what is cool as well is that if you want to go like the bad route, because the bad route basically is that you you sort of eat everyone, right? Yeah. Oh, to, to get okay. more and more vampires, so you get more and more powerful. And so by doing that, you do bad choices with the NPCs to meet their demise. Well, actually, you have to social engineer them a bit. So meaning you have to talk with them, know about them to enrich their blood, because somehow uh, knowing more about them makes um, gives you more XP. So <laughs> okay. by going the bad route, you get more powerful. But if you want to do the good route, you'll be less powerful, but you'll be doing the good choices because the good route is not acting like a vampire, right? <laughs> so it's, it's super interesting what they've done. Yeah, that is kind of cool, actually. Um, a little... A little uh um... Same topic, I guess, but I was curious as you guys are talking about vampires. Um, I heard it talked about quite a bit, but I don't know if you two have played this one. What about, uh, was it Vampire the Masquerade? Have you guys tried that one out? Uh, no. No? Okay. Which one? Uh, I think Vampire the Masquerade. Yeah, I think that's the title. I actually bought that game for Steam. Is, um, is it I good? Actually, um, I have not played it. My oh, okay. friends say it's a very great game. Yeah. They also um what you call it, enjoyed uh wanna get uh Bloodlines, which is the newest game okay. to the Vampire Masquerade. Um Bloodline 2 actually the uh, the other one. I'm not a hundred percent sure of how good that game is. I just see like a big um, like cult following for that game, a lot of praise, and I was like, "What? Well, like, well, wonder what the game's like, actually." <laughs> yeah, because it, it basically created a fantasy world. And I mean, I didn't play it, but from what I gather, created a big fantasy world and um, really sold the idea of uh, of this vampire world with clans and you know uh, these choices that affect all that it's you know a, a bit like a bethesda game but with vampires right oh, okay 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 that's kind of what i thought it would be like and okay. um i think bloodline 2 is gonna be more third person no not the, uh, third person is when you only see the hand moving correct because but, i know there's a difference between first person and third person well first person you're like the view of the eyes so you yeah. see you know, the hands okay, and so third person they, you see behind the character. Okay, so they are doing two options for that game, Bloodborne 2, which is third person or first person. Okay. Depending on how you want to play the game. Because I, I know there's a lot of people that can't really do that many first person games because um, I guess they get somehow nauseous because of it. Yeah. I actually have a streamer friend that don't really do that many uh, first-person shooters due to the fact that it makes her uh, have, like, headaches and spinning. And, you know, I guess the mechanics alone 
interfere with her somehow. So no, I get that. It, it they do, hard. So if they do both, they have more options to possibly sell the game because a lot of people will be able to um play it. That's a good point. Actually, I already thought about that as far as like selling a game, having both uh cab reviews. That's a good uh, that's a good idea actually. Oh yeah, for sure. It, it depends on I mean, how much development time you want to do. Yeah. First person is easier because you don't need to do the full model of the character, right? You don't need to make it detailed or anything because you'll never see it. So third person is harder because you'll see all the weird animations that the character will do, right? I know, it's so true. Anytime yes. I have a first person game, I always try to look down and see if I could see feet or not. I'm like, oh, there's got to be something I could see on this character. <laughs> <laughs> I and I know you would be one of those persons that will always do it. I want to see feet, damn it! <laughs> am I a ghost? You, Where are my feet? I gotta know. Am I floating? It, Is it, there feet? It reminds me of uh, it reminds me that uh, very new children episode where uh, Al is having a, a nightmare and he's unable to see his feet and uh, oh yeah. <laughs> And uh, it just reminded me of that uh, particular uh, scenario each and every time, like when it comes to that. <laughs> no, that's a good one. <clears throat> um, before we go too far off from it, though, I, I'm pretty positive your answer is still the same, JW. But uh, is this still game of the year for you, uh, Stellar Blade? For sure. Yeah, it still is. For okay. sure. I wasn't sure if. The oh yeah, no. Uh, like it. I still play and do stuff, and then. I'm like, fuck, that's cool. <laughs> and, uh, like, uh, all, all the things that, you, in terms of, you know, gameplay battle that you can do in terms of combo, when to pause, when to faint, what skill to use, and all that. Well, faint. Not necessarily faint, but, you know, you can do pauses between your combo and switch up to another move. Oh, or okay. hold certain move, and then it charges the move, and makes it stronger and so all of these stuff uh, it's just awesome it's well made the levels are well made everything is pretty much well made i'm so excited so sure right now but space marine 2 is coming up so maybe a contender <laughs> uh, if it com it comes out this september and i'm a big fan of the first space marine so and wa the warhammer 40k universe yeah, so, uh, oh. it, it it might be a battle for my fan heart. So, <laughs> oh, so true. I don't. Oh, War did we just lose my page? No, no. Can you still hear me? No, it's. I think sometimes it bugs out. Gotcha. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, but I was just gonna say I'm a huge fan of Warhammer as well. So, um, anything Warhammer, I'm glad to uh, consume. Well, especially Space Marine, because, you know, Space Marine is one of those things where... Because often Warhammer 40k stuff, most of the time, is strategy games, right? And that's because yeah. the first Warhammer 40k game was Dawn of War, which was an RTS, a real-time strategy game. And, uh, well, also because there is there is strategy to Warhammer 40k. It's a tabletop game, right? Yep, yep. So... Uh, so, Space Marine is one of the few games where it's super action and it's putting you in the Space Marines uh, and how they battle and all that. And uh, they, they, this, that first game just made it so well, the ambience and the feel of it, right? So, and it, it's a surprise also to see Titus back after the end of the first game as well so uh, i'm very looking forward to it jw I, I, I feel like i'm gonna have a big long list of games by the time this year is is done because <laughs> i know you're gonna kill me but i i never did play the first one <laughs> but i did want to play oh, Space I, Reads. <laughs> you should absolutely i i i think i wonder no i, I don't feel like it's on, i was gonna say can i, was gonna say, I, I think it's on sorry I hasn't been ported to Xbox yet because it's an Xbox 360 game. 
Oh shit! Really? Okay. I was just gonna say I thought it might be on Game Pass, but I guess it would be. Um. Well, the thing is, what you gotta make sure is um. One, if you could get a possible hard disk, because I don't think he's gonna literally find it possibly on the Xbox Pass since Xbox does only limit certain games. Yeah, yeah. To be uh. Well, plus they, back. they remove some too. Right? Well, I mean, I would say it's on PC at low price, but you don't have a PC. So. <laughs> Not yet. Um, but I do have a 360. You have one of those uh, Chromebook where you can't do anything with it. Yeah, the crap book. <laughs> yeah, really, yeah, I couldn't. I wouldn't have said it better, actually. Um, but yeah, shit. Wow, I didn't think it was the 360 it came out on. I don't know why. I didn't picture it being that old of a game already. Wow. Okay. Yeah, PS3, Xbox 360, the first one. Wow. Which is why it was such a big surprise at the Game Awards that there was a sequel coming up and not only a sequel but that the main character was coming i mean i won't spoil but uh no no of course the ending of the first one but uh let's just say it wasn't looking too good for him <laughs> so but uh so it was such a big reveal and yeah that's you know, a long time gap wow. and bowing all over it and uh, the the tra all the trailers and gameplay reveal has been really cool so no, that's um, awesome. Speak of space I've already games, pre pre order it uh, actually through Amazon. <laughs> nice. <laughs> of course you would, JW. Of course yeah. you would. You like was... if it's like the first one, then I'll be a okay. I'll love it. I don't need it to be more. Just that it doesn't. That it's not less than the first one, right? So, uh, JW, before you popped into Discord, me and uh, Mindful Pig were having a discussion of why do game developers always skip, like, the first gen of that game and not re re uh, remake that one first? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, um, you know, when you decide to make a trilogy, right? Like, let's say Halo 1, 2, and 3. Why would they pick Halo 2, let's just say, instead of Halo 1? And I was just kind of like saying that I my guess, right, is that they're probably going to pick the most popular one of that trilogy and then see how well that yes. does. Yeah, right. And then, yeah, logically, yes, it would be nice if they started with one, but that's my guess, at least why they would. Yeah, often, well, cer certainly in that time, there were a lot of good sequels. So, in terms of, let's say, Halo, yeah, second one is obvious choice i mean it's same thing for silent hill it's same thing for um i would well i say i'm not sure why for resident evil 2 though because yeah as far as i remember most people prefer the first one than the second one so my thought for that is probably that it resident evil remake 2 was probably a trial run uh and probably the person directing the project was it was probably his favorite or the one where he saw he could make the best changes from maybe and, uh, and then it worked so well that they decided to do the other ones because if you try three compared to two um it somehow it feels like there was less care into it and it's very 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 short yeah, I heard that, that they and, really messed um, up through you by making it uh, incredibly short. Yeah. Yeah, they skipped a lot of stuff, and it's just weird. It's It, it, feel, it feels rushed, to be honest. And um, and apparently Remake 4 is really good, but I still yeah. haven't played it. It's on my list. And Well, that's one of those titles. I mean, I'm also, like, also you... scared, because I love the, the cheesiness and stupidity of the of the original one and uh, but uh, i'm sure i'll still have fun because apparently gameplay gameplay wise it's great well the demo of it was great i had fun with it that's like like that'd be one hell of a mistake right if they actually screwed up number four so i could see why they probably took their time more yeah i almost wonder if yeah. like if you're right if maybe if number two did so much more success than they expected that maybe they did kind of put the you know a fire under everyone's ass and said okay we want number three out as quick as fast as possible right 
I wonder if that really was the reason for that one. Because yeah, it's weird. Yeah, the, sure, like, yeah it's just it. weird how re how like uh, different the review was for three versus two. Um, after the success, it's extra money too, right? For the development of four. Yeah, that's true. Like I'm sure that they knew once they saw that how big of a success two was. I'm sure they knew. Okay, we'll want to get to four because four is the most popular one, right? Yeah, good point. And then they didn't thought much of three, and they just rushed it out. That's what I think. I mean, I get it. Like honestly, the biggest I ever hear about number three is Nemesis. Like that's the one everyone gets excited and pumped about, right? Where two, um, it sounded more like the environment. Yeah, but he was a bitch to beat, and <laughs> I'm sorry to say it, but dumb to bring him to Dead by Daylight. Literally, like that destroyed it for me. Having the full respect for. Uh, Resident Evil to give up their craziest boss and put it on DVD Dead by Daylight when that game should get its own type of remake because it's literally got into a point where um, it's a lot of repetitive there's a lot of cheaters on the game and yeah they they need to basically rebuild the game because it is extremely bad especially how they decide to go one-sided with the game yeah i haven't played that one i'm sure quite a while. Uh, I, yeah i was gonna say i'm sure shay disagrees <laughs> yeah she, she likes the game right oh she loves it yeah um, I don't think we've come across too many cheaters, at least that we have noticed. Um, but you're right, Sheila. We, there, probably, there might have been some that we just didn't even catch on to, right? Because there's sometimes, yeah, for sure, you get killed pretty damn quick, or the killer finds all the, the survivors pretty quickly, and you kind of wonder, you know what I mean? Um, but Sheila is right. It's an extremely old game at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, actually. Who was that, like, first But they tried to bring all these characters like chucky and yep <laughs> never said <laughs> and i don't i don't know what the other freaking twisty guy that they brought into the game like um, it's like a rubber band yeah like a rubber well, band had, with no bones you had the saw characters too right that were in there um, you had Silent Hills, uh, Pyramid Head. That was the Saw there. character. So what does Saw do? Um, Just narrate the game? <laughs> no. Um, do you get the? Uh, you get the game. <laughs> That'd be so funny. Um, no, you get the girl with the pig mask. She just runs around. The one that like oh, okay. captures them all. Yeah. Yeah. Let's oh, play a game. <laughs> Uh, you. Oh, thank she you. He just teacher. narrates you to death. <laughs> That'd be so funny. <laughs> oh my god! Thank you for the sub Z. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I you I, have I... to start the engine. <laughs> Otherwise, it will break, and my little friend will not be happy. <laughs> It'd be such a ridiculous match. <laughs> they also had um. Oh, who else was there? There was the the ring girl too, right? Whatever her name is, I can't remember now. Um, she was in there, but you're right, you're right, Sheila. There was there was lots. I forgot. Oh, I forgot all about Nemesis being in there. Actually, he had like a whole like um, his own season, I think, when they brought that uh, Resident Evil chapter in. Well, I blame Fortnite for this. They're the ones that um, I think started the whole trend of getting crossover like characters into games that makes no sense yep yeah uh, i'm sure or maybe not started but certainly popularized that trend yeah yeah exactly. well how about uh the money currency thing it was all four nights for for that and, for what uh the currency that you had to buy skins and right. other stuff like oh, that yeah they were the start of all that. Cause that's well, I mean, buying skins were, were, were was was a thing before Fortnite. 
No, it wasn't. If one day actually started that whole trend. Like for skins? Yeah. No. No, I'm pretty Fortnite's sure it started way old. before Fortnite. Yeah, I said yeah. Fortnite's not that old. It had to be one before Especially that, Especially right? with free-to-play. I mean, that's how they did their money, free-to-play games. Well, I was just going to say, did because um, I'm trying to think of like older games like that. Did Team Fortress do crossovers? No, right? Uh, no, just... I don't think so. So, yeah, I think you're right. I know Smite did, though. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, Smite, yeah, okay, so Smite might have been. Smite did, but not characters crossover, they were it skins crossovers, right? So, yeah. for this god, for example, you could have the, I don't know, the skin from this character, right? But you're right, I do think, yeah, Fortnite was the one that made it a little more popular and got other companies looking into it. Because you had, what, Call of Duty, I think, has done it now for Warzone. Um, I mean, I, I I believe them like it's a bad thing. I mean, uh, it's a genius move from them. Yeah. I mean, like, as, as a company, I wouldn't do anything different. <laughs> I mean, I get it, yeah. Cause like, I mean, just uh, be more aware of who they're going to promote in the game because... Yeah, Fortnite took back their promotion to a certain map real quick. And did that whole uh, episode with the with, with his uh, actual concert. Oh, what? Uh, they had um, Travis not Scott. Not aware of that. What? Yeah, uh, Travis Scott when he did a concert. There's a few of them now that have done, haven't they? There, yeah, I think Travis Scott started it. He did a concert on Fortnite. And then you had uh, that uh... Uh, Ariana Grande. Oh wow, she did too. Okay, I, I was gonna say there was yeah. um, what's that uh, DJ Marshmallow Man or whatever the fuck his name is. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, that's... where they do experiences. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's been a few of them now. I feel like there's definitely been a handful. <laughs> well, I mean, Fortnite is the most popular game out there. Everybody knows about it. Yeah, and at that time too, it was a good uh, it was a good moment to have that because I think that was during COVID. So, like, I mean, if you're gonna have a concert, sure, why the hell <laughs> have having it in a video game? <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> thanks, Cheyenne. <laughs> Woo, Travis. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, so curious, you guys. I mean, everyone in the Discord had some really good input and uh, comments. I think this was one of the the more interesting topics because everyone had their own passionate opinion on where they took a stand with Hellblade 2 or just with uh, short games in general. I didn't get a big response on Twitter. Um, but yeah, I mean, whoever really wants to kick the bandwagon off, you both played Hellblade 1, which is fantastic because it gives you a little more ground to stand on as far as your opinions go. Um, like I said myself, I just watched a bunch of podcasts and it seems like the consensus is all the exact same thing. Um, this is a, a good game, but all the praise is going towards the visuals um, and pretty much nothing else. It sounds like that's kind of its saving grace, but I mean, yeah, whoever wants to kick it off, well, go ahead. Sheila, did you play the second one? Or I'm no? actually playing it right now as we speak. Oh, ah. well, I, I guess Sheila should start, I think, she, since she's touched Hellblade 2. <laughs> She's like, let me tell you, the well, visuals. Uh, <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> well, the visuals just gives it a big plus to the game. I would say the visual alone gives it a 6 or 7 on uh, the psychological aspect of it. The nav uh the nav uh the nav uh the people who actually um, do the shadow voices and the demon inside the Hellblade um, without giving too many things of what's going on with them until you play your Hell with Hellblade 1 are still the same voice actors, which I appreciate that. They didn't really change much. Um, what I understood from the beginning of this uh, Hellboy 2 starts off with her being at a younger age than Hellblade 1 started. 
So this is actually going back further in history of her becoming the woman that she is. Okay. Um that's how much I can say of that. There is a lot of history behind this which is not really let's say too deep into it, but as far as I know, like this is going further back in the story that instead of going in the future of it. So we might be left with two cliffhangers by the end of the game. I'm just pointing it that way. The cliffhanger for the first one might be answered or might not be answered. Okay. I, I, I did gather a lot of that too from um, things in the podcast I was listening to that this was um, a different chapter in her life. Like he said, being an adult now. Um, yeah. Okay. What about you, JW? Well, I mean, I didn't play the second one, but from what I've gathered through talks and reviews, it seems that they've simplified a lot of stuff and that the the only thing that it's better at are the graphics. Otherwise, as I hear it, they've simplified the gameplay, which to a, a lot of people, and I, I think I would fall into that camp if I would try well, it. Well, I I'm think a big... they... I'm sorry to cut you off. They simplified a lot of the fighting mechanism. I only got into one fight. It seems like they shorten the amount of combat that you need to do in this game. Which, in one way, that's why it shortens the game a lot. But in another way, I miss that about this game because the combat is what, like, leads me to, like, oh my god, I'm liking this, you know? It's not only a walking around simulator. Yeah, the the combat for me in the first Hellblade was was the best mix between a cinematic experience and having to battle, uh, having gameplay, right? You had multiple combos that you could use ways to counter and use the light. And, you know, you had a bunch of mechanics to use and that you could do. And, I'm a, you know, I'm a big... Uh, I'm big into having multiple ways to combo and use your abilities on in combat right so you f you had that in your first first hellblade and from what i understand of what i've heard in this second one there's not much com they've lessened it compared to the first one which sounds like something that would annoy me that i would not like and um so there's that. There's a, it, apparently it's shorter to where Hellblade One was a short game <laughs> to begin, and now apparently I hear it's like between two to six hours, which to a seventy dollar game is too much for me, too short for too much. Like the Resident Evil Three, you know, I didn't play, I didn't buy it at launch because I heard it was around that same amount of time as well. You know, so I'll, it's just going to be a game wall. Well, I guess you brought a good point early on the Discord, though. It's on Game Pass. So I guess it nullifies the the, the price aspect of it. Yes but, and no, because then, you know, the, it's just going to be like, okay, when they take it off of uh, Game Pass, then what are you going to do? You're going to buy it for either full price or whatever price they say the sale on the sale goes on, which could only be ten percent, and you're not really saving that much because all these Xbox game lease are not technically uh, going to be there forever. I just I don't right. I don't see them taking off anytime soon though, because like we just said, right? You can get Hellblade One still on Game Pass. Um, and that's been no, but she's making. 
she's making a good point. She's saying that, yeah, currently it's low price because you can get it on Game Pass. But let's say later on, you want to get it. Yeah, yeah. And they 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 could have they they can take it off during that time, and then you're obligated to buy the hype version of it, right? And so let's say you wait a while; it's not on Game Pass anymore, and now it ha the price has dropped to let's say fifty, sixty dollars instead of seventy. Right? Yeah, it's still a lot of money for a six hour, two to six hour experience, right? Well, here's, anyway, for me, here's the interesting part that I, I heard. And again, like these, this is really none of my own opinions. Like I said, I just gathered a bunch of other people's opinions and you know, kind of put things together that made sense or was a common trend. Um, I will shout out the um, XNC uh, podcast, though. Uh, they were the ones that I got that um, basically comment about, like, well, it's on Game Pass. And, and they made, and it was, like, an interesting point because um, a lot of their fans, or I guess not fans, but just critics, whatever you want to call it, were attacking them, going, oh, you're not a real player of Xbox unless you're purchasing this game and actually supporting the devs. And, like, one guy's like, dude, Phil, no, that's stupid, Phil Spencer himself the devs get a share of the game pass. Well, not only that, but like uh, they're like they're literally promoting you to get game pass. Like they want you to have game pass to play these games. That's exactly where they want you to to play Hellblade Two on. Um, he's like, so if anything, I'm I'm doing exactly what Xbox would want me to do, <laughs> which I agree with. Oh completely. yeah, for sure. And but it's true that I don't know how much the company out of game pass that's a question it, yeah that is but um they're 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 making money for sure they, i mean xbox owns them um, so, i mean it, it, it it's not a problem yeah and i think this is a digital only game too so i don't think we'll be able to get a physical copy of this game if i'm correct i feel like i, I heard that a few times i'm not sure about that yeah I'll... it could be true i think this it was true at first for the first one until Maybe it got ported. I'm not sure. I think it was true for the first one as well. Yeah, I'll search because a couple podcasters too said that. Um, but anyway, I was gonna say as far as far as like the price tag goes, right? Um, we also have to remember there is like sales, there's discounts, right? When games usually are on Game Pass, they actually, if you never noticed before, there is a another little column you can go to when you click on those games and. Most of the time, they'll give you a discount because it's on Game Pass. So you could buy it at a cheaper price. Obviously, it's not going to be true right now for Hellblade 2 because it just got launched. But if we are talking months down the road, years down the road, right, there is possibilities of, of lots of discounts. So the actual paying of $50, uh, to me at least in this day and age, is a choice you're going to make. You know what I mean? If you're patient, you wait, you're probably going to get that game at a cheaper price. Uh, we've seen that with many different crazy game sales, right? Like Steam sales, um, summer summer day sales, and all those other ones that the multiple um, platforms have. So, yeah, if you're going to pay full price, it's probably going to be a little bit crazy, but we also live in a day and age now where I just said, like, you, you, have, you have us on Game Pass. If you don't get it on Game Pass and you decide to get it later down the road, wait for a sale. If you don't believe in paying the fifty dollars price tag, right? There's nothing wrong with that. Um, yeah, and you're right; it, it doesn't have a physical release. Yeah, so I mean, you know, another kind of shitty part, right? Because we've we've talked about the whole physical versus digital um, idea. So there is a point in time where this game might not even exist anymore, <laughs> which is really shitty. Yeah. Um, but what I was gonna say for uh, as far as your dollar value goes, now. One, this is only one person, the entire thing I listened to um, that gave this statement, but like, I think he did the best job in all honesty of all the podcasts I listened to talking about Hellblade 2, um, all the people that were on there. I think this guy really knew his shit and um, was talking from a gamer's perspective. So it's Paris. Um, like I said, I didn't really know who this guy was. And apparently he's a really big deal um, as far as uh, gaming influences go. He was on the Kind of Funny pod, uh, podcast, uh, Kind of Funny Games, sorry. We should not screw it up. Um, but anyway, he's uh, one of the irregular hosts that are on there. Yeah, Kind of Funny game cast. Um, and he basically said, you know, if you're going to play this game, play it twice. He says, this is definitely a game that you want to go through twice. Once is the total experience of it all. And the second time he kind of was looking at through, um, you know, is what she going through actually happening? You know, like now I'm going to peel back a layer of the onion and, and see, you know, like if I can unravel a little bit more of that mystery. 
Um, so for him, right, he just took a six hour game, made it to a 12 hour game, which I know sounds kind of silly and all that, but we have just literally talked on here about replaying video games that we enjoyed or. Yeah, or okay. Well, back, I, right? I could I could apply the same logic on the first one, though, and you'll have a longer game. True. And then the, the then the sequel. You see, that's my problem with the sequel that I have not played. But that's my problem for what I've <laughs> read about it, right? It does everything less than its predecessor, except in the graphics department. Yes, that bothers me. And that's and that's exactly what he said. That's why I got mad. And I made that comment on Discord, right? Because when the Xbox Xbox guy came on, I can't remember what podcast he's from, but you could just tell it was almost like Phil Spencer like shoved money in his pocket. He was like, you know, you just just say a couple nice things about it, right? Like the dude had nothing negative to say. He came on there right off the bat, like hot as fire going yeah this is a solid 9 out of 10 best game i could have possibly played in a really long time yeah so i I've... played it twice i gave it a 9 out of 10 i'm like then they say which you know what to be honest then they say oh you know the 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 fighting combat was weak yeah okay like... the fighting combat was weak we give that a three and then they're like oh Oh, the art was great. That gets like a seven out of like ten. But you know, yeah. Well, like the first. No one talks first... about the narr the 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 narratives uh, being the same voice actors as the last game. No one commented about any of the particular things that people would want to know about the game. Well, the first two, like I was saying, the first two people did an excellent job. Paris did by far the much better explanation of it all um but the xbox guy yeah i agree with you like basically these guys you know they, they didn't give i mean one gave the game a six out of ten the other one paris i think he gave it eight out of ten right um but the xbox guy was literally going to give it like a ten out of ten if he could have i think he settled for a nine um but yeah it was like you know they talked about combat well, you have to think as well it, it might not be uh he was paid or anything but i mean xbox currently is starved I mean the player base for good, uh, good games coming from them. You know they they've had failures after failures, and this is probably their first you know, good, semi big title they've had, right? Yeah. So it, no, it, no, I totally it get must that. Feel I, I totally understand. And like, that's um, exactly what the um, other podcast was saying too. Like, you know, this is, this is Xbox's win. And they were hoping for this to be their money in the bank. And again, there's, there's nothing, it's like, it's like there's nothing bad with the game. Like I said, the, the common consensus across all of this is that this is a good game. Everyone should play this game, but, you know, it is more a visual experience, right? And I said the only part that frustrated this gentleman, right, was when I said the fact that like he was like combat is perfect and, and this is perfect and that's perfect and this is great, right? And it's like it's not, and it's okay to say it's not. It's okay to say it. This is where the game excelled in, and this isn't where you know. If, if, I, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of overhyping a game just to you know say right. okay here this is your excuse to get on game pass this is an excuse to start rooting for xbox when that's not really well, you know, the reason right like i mean yeah you could say it's a great visual game this is a great direction uh for the future of gaming and thankfully we get to try on xbox and just leave it at that you don't have to say this is the game that's going to be win game of the year like it's, it's not the, the actually the other thing that annoys me with this is Triple A games or big companies making sh short games really bothers me heavily because they have all the money and people they could ask for to figure out how to make a decent length game and what to do with the story and all that. And so when it's not an indie studio, you know, an indie studio, you, you can sort of forgive somewhat, right? because they don't have everything at their disposal. But a AAA company that does this feels almost, I don't want to say predatory, because it's not predatory, but it feels, it doesn't feel, it doesn't sit right with me, is all, right? And Ninja Theory is not an indie studio. It's like they've been, ever since the first Hellblade, they've been acting as if, they were uh, making indie games, and they're not. 
they're not an indie studio, right? And the 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 first game was great, and now they they they're owned by Xbox, so they're by far not an indie studio, even more than before. And it, it's just weird to me that they they've made a shorter game, and it's just. Uh, I guess they must have started the development before they were bought by Xbox as well. So yeah. I, I don't know how much of how much of that money went to that project, right? Well, the sounds of it, like um, I think more of their money went to uh, what's that space game? Um, that Xbox Studio promoted made oh, Starfield. Killed... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know you uh, gave that laugh, but uh, you know, kind of, uh, that's where most of their uh, funds went, thinking that that game was going to beat uh, Skyrim and some other games. Well, it sounds like a lot of Hellblade 2's money went um, to actually going... Um, oh, where does it take place again? Norway or Iceland or whatever the hell it is. <laughs> One of those areas. Uh, but they actually sent the team out there to sure. fo- to photograph the environment and everything. That was another thing that was brought up during all those podcasts. Uh, like, where did the money go for yeah, the-, the technology? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, it's all in the tech. Because in terms of tech, it's revolutionary what they've done. Right? Exactly. And how they did it. And to me, like, but I almost wonder. Thing. It all went there. And that's the thing I was wondering, right? Is I wonder if this game was just an excuse for them to kind of showcase um, the power that they have, right? Like, so it's like uh, the first game, by the sounds of it, it was all about those mechanics, like the voices that you could hear through your headset and um, like the, the the game story itself. Um, and then the second one sounds like it's really, I mean, well, obviously it's pretty heavily based on the visuals and all that. So I don't know. I I just I almost wonder if they were using this game as just like a stepping stone to say like, "Hey, get ready for our next game that's coming out because this is the kind of quality you can expect." Like, you know what I mean? Well, it sounds like they they wanted to make a trilogy out of something that did not need to be a trilogy. Yeah. Yeah, that was another thing that was mentioned too that will will there be a third one? And it does sound like a lot of people think there will be. Well, it's it's what the games industry does. They con- I don't know if you've noticed this, but they've al- they always make uh, franchises out of, out of at least three, if not more. Yeah. So then, or and so then they can make the special, let's say, Ezio collection, where you have all the three games with Ezio in it, or the special. Deus Ex Adam Jensen edition, where you would you would have the three uh, Deus Ex game if the second game was a success, and uh, you know it, it's feel it, often that's what AAA game studios does. They plan out three games because it makes more money. Yeah, because they put all the money into making the first one because it's from scratch. Then the second one they can reuse. Stuff that they've used for the first one, and then the third one is the conclusion that was supposed to be that didn't need to be stretched out all the way to three <laughs> games, right? So true. Yeah, but I'm still interested to try it. I just want to, like, I mean, alone, right? I just want to see this visual experience that everyone's talking about because uh, almost all of them said that they hope that this one in the game show award. Um, wins for like best visual or best art style and that um i honestly i can't remember the voice actor's name or the the character that's in there uh but her as well they hope that she wins an award because she apparently did an amazing job uh with the acting throughout this um no i don't doubt it i mean she was great in the first one yeah and and she knows probably the character inside out so i i don't see why she she would be different unless they change directors right that's what i say like when they all mentioned that right i'll have to check and see but like i mean if she was this great in the second one like did she not win any awards in the first game like i mean i'm assuming it was the same i don't remember i was gonna say like i'm assuming it's a great you know same great acting right I i don't think she would have done you know tremendously better in the second one like i'm assuming she did an awesome job in the first one as well um 
And then the other one that kind of shocked me, I don't know, because I said you guys both played the first one, so I'm, I'm curious when you do play the second one, how you'll feel. Um, but a lot of them actually were getting irritated by that, um, uh, the voices. Uh, apparently that was actually a really annoying mechanic after a couple of hours. But as far the as... The second one specifically? Yeah, or yeah. No, the second one... Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, because I, I said the first one, I, I just, from what I understand, right, that's a main part of the game. So I was kind of surprised that a lot of people said, yeah, you know, we were kind of getting irritated already with the voices in the second game. That's interesting. I guess they must have done something different. I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's that one. And then the other big uh, complaint from everybody, it seemed like, was the puzzles. The puzzles are ridiculously easy from what I uh, heard. Like, to the point where they said, like, there was moments where the character, where I guess, would, like, let's say, glance past uh, uh, an area. And as long as your character kind of went somewhat over that puzzle, the cutscene would kick in right away. And they'd be like, okay, you solved it. It was like, well, I didn't even see what it was. Like, <laughs> um, so that part, uh, yeah, that part I'm going to be kind of leery on i guess that'd be disappointing so if to answer your question about if the, she won best performance she did in 2017 at the game awards oh good for her okay good okay so it's not like a one-time deal her name melina Jer i guess it's jurgens it's uh, with a j but oh okay you know jurgens but i'm sure it's pronounced jurgens but anyway uh she yeah she did won the 2017 best performance award okay yeah it's just the way everyone was talking it sounded like it was either someone new i was like no it has to be the same person obviously i was like i wonder why they're making it sound like this is the first time she did a good job <laughs> i guess maybe just <laughs> first yeah uh well i mean it, it would have been possible you know if she would have came out at this around the same time as uh let's say god of war Probably oh, God of yeah. War would have won because it's a triple A game and not an indie game, right? Very true. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been tough and competition. I, you see, I just said that, but it's not an indie game. <laughs> but they've sold the idea that Sinua Sacrifice was an indie game. I get it though. Like if you were gonna compare the two of them, you wouldn't compare that one as a triple A compared to like God of War, right? But you're right, it should be. It should be at the held at the same value. No, it's not only that. It, when Sinua Sacrifice came out or all the way until it came out, the game was marketed that way as, oh, well, you know, we're giving it this indie vibe and it's actually very much more of an indie. It's not a triple A. And, you know, there were all these interviews as and all, all this explanation as to why it was an indie experience and not a triple A game, even though it comes from a triple A company. Anyway. I'll have to look those up, uh, yeah. For, Fun times. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. so, so while we're on the subject, and the both of you have actually purchased a few uh, mm -hmm. retro games and stuff in the past, um, the second part of the Hellblade topic, right, was what what qualifies um, a good game for the amount of uh, hours that you're putting into it, right? So I guess we're saying basically six hours doesn't cut it when it comes to a AAA uh, game. Um, but yeah, like you know, from your guys' well, point not of for me. No, 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 no. That's... I know that Jimmy. I, I know that Jimmy. He, <laughs> he was, doesn't mind the length. He was so passionate about that. The only reason I looked at the Discord because he was like, "Man, you have to see the conversation that me and JW are having right now." Like, <laughs> he was just so disappointed <laughs> that you didn't see his point of view. <laughs> I mean, oh, I love him. He's allowed. But, uh... <laughs> I mean, no, no I, I, I didn't agree with him. I know. Because, you know, I, I'm I'm putting my, my money to interact with the product, right? Yeah. If you want to see it that way. So what I expect from it is a certain length and a certain... Because I'm not into walking simulators, right? Uh, I'm, I might as well watch a movie at that point. <laughs> Fair enough, and, yeah. Uh, so okay. I'm, I'm expecting a certain interactability level of interactability and a certain length from it especially if it's high priced um jw so then let me ask you a question what did you think of death stranding i hated it. <laughs> it, it it's a terrible terrible game it's uh no i'm uh, exaggerating it's not terrible terrible but um i do think it was 
extremely overhyped and that it's only living the only person that like it i think it's because they are a fan of kojima's otherwise i don't think it's a game that would have ever worked period if it was anybody else like it's so stupid it makes no sense it's the gameplay is not even like i could see it i could see a way to fix it right cuz I want to compare it. I had this conversation with my friend and he didn't understand what I was saying. But basically in Death Stranding, what you do is you go from A to B, right? Because you deliver packages, right? Sure. But that's the thing. There's nothing else in between. I mean, there, there are weird anomalies and you have to climb mountains. But, you know, there's nothing to make you explore really right to make you walk around you have to reach this place and that's it that's all and i think that's what it's missing from that game it needs something it needs to take a note out of the no man's sky book i think where in no man's sky there's always something like you have an objective to go but you're always distracted with something around right there's always something that that you you want to see and bring back with you to that objective, right? And I think it would have been a more interesting game if there were elements like this to make you go around the place instead of just go going directly to A to B. Because essentially what you were doing is going from cinematic to cinematic, right? It, it was almost a walking simulator mm -hmm. if it weren't for the stupid challenging weather of like acid rains that you can't go around or... Uh, and stuff like that. Um, the Z Chuck, if you're talking about Death Stranded, Death Stranded does have a story. Actually, Death Stranded is getting a whole new game, which I don't know when that's coming out for PlayStation exclusive. Uh, I still haven't played the first one. I got it for free. Actually, no, I lied. I bought it, and then Three times in a row, it came out on the Epic Store absolutely free as one of the AAA mystery games. So, I'm kind of pissed about that. Anyhow. Yeah, z Chick was saying uh, um, JW, so um, I guess I shouldn't play it then. <laughs> That's what z Chick was saying. Well, I don't recommend it. Some people <laughs> like it, but I mean, uh, it's super stupid and like would you say that's one of the issues yeah. that it's lacking a story to it or lacking uh, more connections that was each mm -hmm. other questions lacking connections like uh what do you mean i guess like she means like you know like um, um character relationships and all that i'm assuming oh for sure yes um the characters talk like there are interactions but they are most of the time meaningless like they say stuff between each other and you can't connect because it there's not much meaning behind them or just the or it, there is a meaning but it's all in this allegory type of thing right it, it it's not a real world meaning uh you can throw piss jars at ghosts i mean <laughs> uh <laughs> Like there's an explanation for it, but it's stupid. Like that that's my whole whole point. What a selling point for a game. I can't <laughs> I, I can't say like there's a I'm not sure I should say this because it's um And it's a long I game, right? Just... Like it's not like this is a short, right? This is like a good what, sixty yeah, no. it's, it's long. <laughs> yeah. You have um It's you, longer you... than persona and it's longer than um, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, Mad Max, it's longer than any other game because, one, you have to build yourself, like, your own packaging system, so you're not considered to be overweight. You have to get all this building equipment. Then you have to make your own bike in order to have a bike. It's a one after the other. I think that game mechanic alone had a whole lot of like possibilities but the whole thing of just walking around cluelessly to get to what uh location a to location b 
and then also had to deal with enemies and you had no weapons to defend yourself it is a lot to freaking handle no i i don't hate the game uh i dislike the game but i hate the pompous sort of over um over hype of this game of of this author type of thing right yeah like because it was made by kojima it has this whole you know oh mystery box type of thing but uh, it's uh, so it's more of the branding and marketing behind it oh it's the first type of this game there's never been a game where you walk around and build stuff to make your walking around easier it's the first trend game sure okay fine Ooh, <laughs> Zijek has a good one for you, JW. I, I, I'm curious too what you're gonna say. Um, so you know, based with Death Stranding, she says, "Do you think a DLC could patch something and fix it, or should they just toss the entire game and remake it?" Toss the entire game and remake it? No, not maybe toss the entire game, but a DLC wouldn't fix it. I, I think, uh, like I say, change doing slight change to the. <clears throat> world design or game design i think you, there are some stuff you could add to make it better but who knows what he will do with the second death stranding i yeah. don't know about you but i've seen the trailer for that second death stranding and it looks goofy as hell <laughs> it, like, does. Uh, it does it hasn't giving me yeah. like it hasn't given me any impression to go back it has just made me made my eyes go round and go <laughs> Wow! Oh, okay. I'm, I'm so was, glad I lost. I was like, I waiting playing. for JW's uh, review on that um, that trailer for that stranded too. Um, cause yeah, it's a uh, ooh. First of all, I uh, can we just uh, can I just say where the hell did this baby? figure that uh, you carry around through the whole Death Stranding game came about. Uh, I still don't understand how this baby came about in this jelly bead. Well, you'll have to <laughs> play the first one to know that. But I'm, I'll tell you right now, it's stupid. Um. Uh, uh, Z-Chick was just thanking you, JW. Says so she loves your insight on video games. <laughs> well, I have better insight on the other games, I would say. <laughs> sure. But I do agree, yeah. Like, like yeah, the trailer for two is weird. I mean, he had that puppet thing too. Like there was just there was more questions I had when I watched that than like answers I was given on if this game was gonna be well, good. Well it's more that there were more <laughs> questions is that it looked even stupider than the first like the first one. <laughs> The trailer and marketing, it looked cool, and you were yes. like, oh, that's interesting. I wonder what he will do. Yep. That second one just looked goofy, and like, <laughs> what the hell am I watching? It looks like a parody of, like, Death Stranding. <laughs> it doesn't look like an actual game. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, 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 it just oh, confirmed that wait, I wait, did wait, well wait, to wait. stop. Wait, <laughs> check if you do it. I want to be in Discord when you play the fucking game. I want to be in your Discord. I want to watch you play the game from head to toe. I want to see you be yourself. Oh, yeah. Um, I would watch Z play the game and see if she finds it as stupid as I do. <laughs> no, but she's going to have a bunch of edibles, so that's going to make it even more crazier. <laughs> oh, yeah, good luck understanding it if you're high, for sure. <laughs> you already feel high playing it. So. <laughs> You mean I can really throw my piss jar at the ghosts and it will hurt them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we thought Conquer was the only game with silly uh, <laughs> weapons, eh? <laughs> I'm telling you, Kojima played Conquer and he he took that idea because there's a level in Conquer where you go to the bathroom and the only weapon you have is pissing on your opponent. <laughs> And you kill them that way. <laughs> and it's Listen. on uh, one particular level of the multiplayer. It's not like a main path kind of thing. But I'm sure Kojima played it in his... <laughs> he probably did. That's where he gets all his ideas from. Just slowly stealing them from retro games. <laughs> Listen. 
if Conquer is where he got that fucking game from, then I'm willing to play just to feel the stupidity of the freaking game. I'm sorry. Just for that, I will play it. But yeah. I would seriously need a lot of shitload to, like, yeah. Wow. Oh shit, you just got raided by full pig. Oh, thank you, small lord. Have a good time lord. losing your time to, uh, to uh, Death Stranding, then. I would uh, recommend Conquer over Death Stranding anytime. Oops, sorry, wrong shout out there. Uh, thank you, Small War, for the uh, raid. I appreciate it. Uh, we're just doing the podcast right now. You're more than welcome to hop into the conversation if you wish. Uh, we're talking about, uh, well, we talked about Hellblade 2. And then we're just talking about what. Uh... Uh, Death Stranding. <laughs> no, yeah, now we, the games. Now we went over to Death Stranding. Um, but back on that topic, because um, <clears throat> Death Stranding we said is a really long game. Obviously, it had a, a price tag attached to it as well. I think it was like, what, 70 or $90 probably at that time. Um, what, yeah. What was your guys' feeling then? So, like, what what is a good price for the hours I'm putting into it? Um, okay. I give it a 7 out of 10 because of the art. The actor that I actually played a part of the, the thing was really freaking amazing to have. Especially, you know, when you can't technically get uh, certain actors to do anything for video games. They think video games is like a big joke. Uh, but you know what I mean? Like, so but, if, you're pay if you're playing six hours of that gameplay, right? Like, do you think 30 was worth it? 40? 50? 10? I would say... If it was like forty five, okay, I would possibly, you know, buy it firsthand. But um, yeah, I don't know about hundred. I I I would never spend a hundred dollars on a freaking game, even though I spent like seventies on Baldur's Gate three, which I still didn't play yet. <laughs> nevertheless, because my friends convinced me. Oh, get, get Baldur's Gate 3. We'll play, we'll play. Bullshit. Uh, yeah, they... I've had that happen with my cousin. He maybe bought Total War or Hammer and never played it with me. <laughs> but, cool. um, uh, my. No, it, it's fine. He just didn't work out. But, um, no, in terms of uh, game length. I always say I think ten is a good minimum to uh, ten hours because it's still short, but there's enough time for to have uh, game me mechanics and to set up a story and finish it, conclude it in that amount of time. You know, it doesn't feel rushed. It doesn't feel like it's the first part of something bigger. It's you have the time I think in a minimum of ten hours to have a good length. Of saying, setting up game mechanics, stories, and um, have fun playing with them, right? And do you view that same um, concept we were talking about an indie game? Or do indie games get like a little bit of a break and they could be less? I think, well, I think indie games can be less, but as a personal, uh, personally, I, I don't like it okay. less. <laughs> no, no, fair enough, because I do but, agree with you. I think 10 hours is a great amount of time for a game. Yeah, because um, here's the thing. like Stuff like Journey or like you know all these <laughs> emotional games that try to tell you something but not really um, it, are like two hours, three hours, and they sort of sell you more on what it, you're supposed to feel at the end and not about if it's a good game, right? And so I, I don't like experiences like that. But uh, for an indie developer to start with something like that, I think it's acceptable, right? It's just I, I'll wait for a sell instead of buying it right away. I'm with you. I, I think 10 hours is a fantastic amount to have for video games because I, I feel you. I think you're probably going to get, well, for most gamers, right? I'm sure that's a good 
two to three uh, nights, right? Because you know, you're thinking about adults, right? Like I said, most of us don't have a lot of time. So 10 hours is enough to, you know, dive into in a few nights or whatever the case might be. <clears> or <throat> have a yeah. whole day off and beat the whole damn game if you want to. <laughs> it's choice is yours. Price-wise, I always felt like 60 is the most I usually would ever pay for a video game. And again, I'm, I'm saying like a video game I truly want. If it's just the game I'm picking up because I heard good things about it or whatever, uh, I'm kind of with you, Sheila. I'll usually spend up to 40 bucks. Um, but yeah, after that, like, and I get it. I get it costs a lot to make a game and I'm kind of being cheap, I guess, in that aspect. Um, I should probably be more willing to... Well, yes and no. But yeah, I just... I mean, let, let, let's be frank here. The Sure, it, it takes... It costs a lot to make a game, but also they're upping the price because the top people that want money are upping the price so they can continue to expand and make more money, right? That's just it, yeah. And like, how many times have you been burned, too? You know, like you buy a game and it's like, oh, this is not at yes. all what I expected, right? So it's just, yeah. I guess as, as much as much as it is a lot of money, I'm, I guess I'm more okay spending sixty dollars and being disappointed than I would be if I was spending ninety or more dollars. You know, um, and then having that same disappointment in the game. Yep. Uh, sorry, we'd say there's you, chick. I like playing weird games like Limbo or Toby the Secret Mind games. Like inside, they are short games of basic puzzles and lots of death. I like free. <laughs> I feel you. I wish all games were free. That would be awesome. <laughs> um, well, well that, that's that's it, though. She mentions that the, these games all have uh, big enough time to have puzzles and fun with them with, without feeling cheaped out, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and I liked your idea, too, what you were saying, you know, like, it just it's that first game by them so it's kind of just seeing like okay like what are you guys into what's your art style like what's you know what's mechanics that you kind of enjoy in your game stuff like that so yeah it, if it's a walking simulator or it's just something quick fast like a platformer um i'm down for it i'm just excited to see what someone's gonna create uh that's... well i mean i think i think stuff like limbo puzzles and platformers uh, i i found that more acceptable than just you know, I'm walking or floating through a level and stuff happens in your screens because you're you're going through an experience, not gaming. Okay, well, I'm here for the gaming. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and like I said to you, right, like for me, it was um, that's why I, I like I do like walking simulators. Um, there are some I feel the same way as you, JW, where I'm just like, OK. Like, I was kind of hoping I was going to do a little more interaction with this. I didn't just want to watch a movie. Uh, but then you got games, like I said, like um, Alan Wake or, or um, uh, uh, Resident Evil Revelations, right? Um, even The Walking Dead did have some pretty good parts with it, too, especially the first one that came out. Um, but I, I love it when you have a little bit of combat, a little bit of um, puzzle solving, um, maybe obviously very heavy into choice dialogue right where it's going to be so and so is going to remember what you just did like i love all that kind of shit um and <laughs> those, those kind of simulators are the ones that, like i was referring to that like i think do a, a great job especially the resident evil one the resident evil one is very heavy um more with combat and stuff like that than i was expecting there is still story there and there's still lots of like dialogue choices but um there is a fair amount of combat in that game which good I night, Z -chick. oh yeah good night Z chick <laughs> uh, oh yeah for for sure i mean that's i mean there's a reason why resident evil is so popular it's because it reaches a lot of different people with its horror aspect its action aspect its survival aspect, its puzzle solving aspect. You know, there's a lot of um, layers to to that series in general of what makes a Resident Evil game good. Yeah, which reaches lots of people. You, you, you know oh, what? I gotta honestly say this. I gotta honestly say this. Um, one of the guys that all he does is play indie games. All he does is play pretty much indie games, and um, let me let me just say this: he just played uh, Crow Country, as you guys spoke about it. Yeah, it, it it was a, a 
he had a great time with it. He was decided to do Nightmare Mode because Nightmare Mode is now in that game. Yep. Um, but, you know, that's one game that I will pick up on Steam since it's not available on all consoles, unfortunately you say. Um, it's only available, I think, on right now PlayStation and Steam at the moment. Yeah, just on the two at the moment. Um, but yeah, no, good shout. Like, an amazing little indie game that came out this year. <clears throat> I still want to try that one out, too. Um, I'll pick it up. But see, that, that's you. Like, that, it's a game where if it was, like, 40 bucks, I'm like, okay, I'll pay it. It's not the end of the world. You know what? To be honest, I think it's only 15 bucks right now. Wow. On Steam. And that's full price for the game. That's crazy. For something that's... That is a great game, and a lot of people are going to consider buying it because it, uh, the map does look like a Silent Hill map. Um, yeah, it literally uh, looks like Silent Hill. Uh, the map of it, and yeah, As you it say. was yeah. As I say, too, to be clear about earlier, uh, when I'm talking about Alan Wake, though, I am just talking about the first one because um, I never did play the second one. But, you know, like in the first one. No, like, the was... second one was extremely short. And the second one was, I'm sorry to say, a little bit trash. Because I played for both. Yes, I enjoyed the Silent, the Silent Hill game. Um, and that's Silent Hill, I'm sorry. I met the freaking um Alawiki. But I don't know how good of a story this second one is brought out because um the Alawik that they just brought out now, I think uh the whole entire story about Alawik has shifted into a whole new outlook and I don't know if I like that because I, I, I get Sorry. it. I mean, uh, uh, I love both. I actually like how different they've made it. That's one of the reasons I liked it, actually. But I can't see why, because the first Alan Wake was a bit, um, you know, a bit like uh, the first season of Twin Peaks, where a, a bit cheesy with poppy characters and yeah. you know, funny dialogue and. So there, there was a, a bit of comedy and horror and, you know, like that. And to keep it with my Twin Peaks analysis, the second Alan Wake was more like Twin Peaks Season 3, where it was a much different uh, beast. It was much more horror serious and not as funny. Or not, yeah, more horror and serious because... Like they say in the game, it it was not. It now became a horror genre, right? I still got a detective a story one. in a horror genre. Really? Yes, for sure. Yeah. Uh, you want to talk about playing through an experience? The second one is great, especially if you understand the whole meta narratives and yeah. the references, and you know, there, there's just so much to these games. Everything that, from the visuals to the music playing around you, and it's just, um, you know, yeah, it's great stuff. But I can't see, I can't see why some people would prefer the the sort of um, of how the the first one was made compared to the second one narratively speaking and yeah yeah because the that. gameplay wise it, it's it's superior for sure the second one i mean and um but i but like i said there's something with the narrative of the other one which made it more like a a sort of um blockbuster movie or story that you would read or see on the in the cinema right while the second one is more like a in the tv show like a true detective kind of thing right where it's super <clears throat> serious and dark oh, okay. more so than the first one 
But yeah, no, I get it. I, I totally get where you're coming from, Sheila. And let's be honest, there wouldn't be a second one if the first one wasn't uh, amazing to begin with, right? Um, okay, so uh, Sheila, I, I, you played a lot. You played a lot of <laughs> PS2 games. So going on that topic, um, what are some of the games that you would like hope for when it would come to this? I know you're not a big fan of it, but I'm just, you know, I'm just curious. Uh, you know, um, what, what, what would you like gamers to experience in the PS2 era? Hmm, PS2 era. Oof. I would say possibly Sly Cooper. Yeah. Um, I think at the PlayStation 3, they kind of um went uh nah with that. Um, I don't know why they went nah, but it was a big nah. Um, Would you be a big fan of Simpsons Hidden Run? I like it's it was an okay game. Yes. Yeah, okay. I don't know. To me it was like an okay game, yes, but some people uh, really seem to love it. I love the Simpsons Hidden Run. That's a great game. The regular Simpson game is a great comedian game. They need to bring comedy back into games. Um I just think there's a lot of missing, uh, missing pieces to it. Um, unfortunately, say uh, kids are gonna miss out on a lot. Like for the humor wise, you mean? Uh. uh we uh i would say hero wise i would say more on pretty much uh i don't know how to put this um not hero wise more uh the fact that uh I don't know how to put this. Oh, you caught me on the spot. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, but I do, no, I do um, agree. The Arbus, you know, PS2 was a fantastic error in gaming. Oh, there's definitely lots of choices. I you would know, uh, put a new Jack and Daxter. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's another one. Uh, also, I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, but... I would love to see what they would do with some kind of confrontation. I know a lot of you don't know which it was a game that is, but that was a team. That was like a team battle game. And um, let's just say I extremely enjoyed it. I will literally put my hours of a time even sleep into it that was my first art war game that i played and it's better than i'm sorry to say call of duty i can see that <laughs> in one way or another but you know what the whole experience of it is what uh is technically being miss out like i think um i think they kind of advertised the ones that i'd be the most excited for was the sly cooper like you mentioned i think that'd be a fantastic one to bring aboard um time splitters was another one that was showed on there that would be a fantastic game to play um i think jimmy brought off a really good point too uh if any of these games do come to uh I'm, do end up showing up to the PlayStation 2 catalog. Um, hopefully, they'll do it justice with a really good multiplayer mode because some of them would be a lot of fun to go back to uh, and replay, like, especially Times Players. So that'd be fantastic to play with people again. Uh, hey, Pizza. Sorry, I see you there, buddy. We were just talking about um, what games you're hoping would come to the PlayStation 5 catalog with that new PS2, um, I guess, update <laughs> to their uh, play uh, playlist. I saw, I heard about that and about the um, whole PS2 thing. Um, 
I'm not even sure how they're going to do it. I mean, I'm assuming it's going to be like, you know, you can download it, hopefully, and it's not streaming, because if it's going to be the whole, you got to stream the games, then I don't care what they put on there. It's going to suck anyways. But Yeah, pizza's it's right. Be, the streaming sucks on PlayStation. If it is going to be downloadable games, I mean, just put, like, put all the games that they made. I mean, they made all these first party games and we don't even have like a fraction of them. Like they just like they keep cherry picking games that you could play. Um, you know, like certain third party games. But it's like, I mean, that's cool and all, but I wanna I wanna play games that they have made, you know, like crap well I, mean, I guess I should I guess I would consider Crash part of the whole catalog, you know, like um what JW said, uh, Jack and Daxter, Sly Cooper, Ration and Clank, like you have all these games, and I'm sure they probably have them already on the catalog. I'm not really sure. I don't have a PlayStation anymore, so I can't really look into it. I was like firsthand, but you know, like put games that Sony has made on the catalog. I mean, that's in my opinion, it's a no brainer. I'm not sure why they're not doing that because you know, most of my favorite games were Jack and Daxter. Yeah. Or Sly Cooper, or even well, I guess not infamous, but you know, like you know, just give us the stuff that you made because it it doesn't make sense for me as someone to you know as someone who loves PlayStation, right? You know, if you're not gonna give me the games that were great on the PS2, it doesn't matter what I want. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. Like. Uh- Sorry, Shane, I, go ahead. I know, well, speak of PlayStation 2 games, um, Silent Hill was imported to this uh, PlayStation 2 from PlayStation 1. I think they changed the first Silent Hill game to Origin. I don't know if that is, is anybody confirmed that or not. But if it's so expensive to buy these discs, why don't you import the actual game in the catalog like pizza explain like just give us our own games back we don't want remakes all the time you know unfortunately saying that's how they make their money but come up with ideas newer games like change it up well i mean it it is that but it could also be like mindful said earlier it could also be a a rights thing, right? For Silent Hill, for say, maybe Konami needs to say yes, or maybe they need to pay something for to the company, right? It could be a question of that, but I, I don't actually know. It's just um, suppositions I'm doing right now. Assuming. Yeah, I, I, I heard about the whole like you know rights to music and stuff. I'm like. First of all, Sony, you are like you have a whole music catalog. They're acting like they can't just go and buy the rights to a song for a game. I mean, like that, like that's the same level like as Rockstar saying, "Oh, we can't put this in there because I got pay money for it." Like Rockstar is a multi-billion-dollar company. They can afford a few songs <laughs> to the to the soundtrack. It's not a, you know, this whole like when a, I, I guess. Maybe it's just me, but whenever I have a multi-million dollar company saying that they can't afford something, yeah, I got to call you out on that because now it's like you're just saying stuff. You know, you both brought up a good point. I'm actually, I was thinking about this when you guys were talking. <clears throat> you're right. What if, what if PlayStation owns that gaming studio? I don't know if maybe you might know this one, JW, but what if they own the gaming studio? <clears throat> Is there really anything that's stopping them from like porting that over? So, like, let's say I can't, I'm honestly not good at knowing which one's PlayStation owns, but um, let's just say it owned all of Sly Cooper's, uh, you know, ones. Could they just automatically bring over all of Sly Cooper? Like, there, would there actually still be legal issues? You see, but that's the thing. I'm sorry. How can I put this? Um, like I was thinking, Xbox did that, right? They did it with Bethesda. We got Morrowind instantly on Game Pass, so there was no issue with that. So, but but I but 
PlayStation owns the right to these games. PlayStation has the right to say, uh, we're going to allow you, the company, to release it to A, A to Z, let's just say. But in the meantime, we're being held back. There's something that could be earned uh, money-wise if they just release them in other ways. But the other question is, does the value of being actually owning those hard, hard disks go down in price because now they're releasing them other ways and not people are not struggling to find them, to have them in the, their collection, to make other money from it? No, totally. That's well, a, the, sorry, Gina, the, go ahead. The return value of, of doing, of, let's say, releasing more games must not be that good otherwise they would have already done it right because they probably have to pay staff to put those games on maintain the servers and you know a bunch of other costs that we don't know about yeah which i mean and like that that kind of goes i guess to another my, another point of my question is these companies well i guess excluding xbox because I don't know how they get their money coming in. I'm not sure if Microsoft like gives them a paycheck or an allowance or whatever. But with Sony though, like well, with PlayStation, <laughs> like they have, they, they yeah, they have all these games. They have all this money. Like you guys are able to really bankroll a lot of these companies. You know, I mean, it's, I don't know if I don't know why they are so hesitant to you know, give people a chance to make games because you know it's like i mean we already had well i guess going back to the ps2 era where we had all these different games coming out you know like in like you know they they could have been flops they could have been zero out of ten out the gate but playstation gave them a chance to you know release it so i don't know what's going on now where sony is like they're they're scared to give more money out to people knowing that if they do that they're going to have a bigger customer base they're going to have the same great games coming out like it's easy money so i don't understand why companies are so they think so backwards on these things because it, it really is a simple fix i agree with you pizza um yeah i'm just i'm just curious like why I don't know, I never thought of it that way. Like if they own if it's a first party studio, right? They own it, like, yeah, why wouldn't they just bring it over? Then that would make sense. So that would be more of just them um, being greedy, I guess, for not porting it over. Well, there's that, but like I've mentioned, servers cost a lot. People don't think about this, but these old games are often streaming only. You don't always can't you can't always download them. And so meaning it's a big strain on servers and uh, Sorry, Jada. Why can't you download so them? To... I don't. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what, what's the decision behind them. But some old games you can only stream. Like for example, oh, okay. some older uh, Ratchet and Clank. You can only stream them. You can't download them on your console. Oh, okay, and, okay. Um, okay, fair enough. I didn't know that. I, I think... thought you could download them all. I I didn't know you had to. Only some could be streamed. Yeah, because I think it's most probably that. A console is playing on the other end or something, and you're streaming from that. But um, okay, all this to say, it's a big strain on servers. Servers cost a lot to constantly run and maintain. And if you want to have more people get on it, then you need to expand it more. You need to have enough room. There's a. Uh, uh, it seems like streaming seems like nothing to the consumer because you just click and play. Of course, but yeah. It's it's the uh, it, it's extremely heavy on servers and cost actually for the provider. So I could see it that way, but I could also see it that they're probably lazy and greedy. So <laughs> yeah, no, like if that's if that's honestly it, if it's a streaming side of it, then I totally get it, right? Um, then it's like a different question of why can't. Why, why can't we download these games, right? It would go into more of, like, that kind of research and, and try to discover an answer. Um, yeah, because I, I agree with you. It, it, well, people, it's easier you're right, people to sell a that. remaster or a remake. 
I say I agree with right. you because like people definitely think like his streaming is just a simple thing. Uh, but yeah, I know there's a lot more behind the scenes. But, um, that that's that's a question that I have you guys. Um, what the shield? Um, I would say that um, uh, why do we then um. But when you say about servers, do we mean like multiplayer? No. Well, it can be mul multiplayer has also needs servers, but it's also uh, when when you stream any streamable thing, whether it's Netflix, Amazon, uh, or gaming, whatever. It, yeah, it takes servers to run those. Yeah, so it, it's like basically, you know, it's like um, Sony has like a cloud. Uh, they, have, they have a machine basically, and the machine is running some sort of cloud-based software. And you know, basically, you know, it's like um, it's not really peer-to-peer, -peer, but it's something of the sort. And you know, basically, you know, like you can kind of just pull data from it without having to play a game. But yeah, I, I get your point on JW because I mean, you know, it's like if the server area is super small, then yeah. You know, about ten million of us couldn't play the same game at once because you know it will be, uh, it will be impossible. And I should know this because when I tried doing the PS3 streaming, or yeah, the PS3 streaming, I realized that every time I try to get on there, I would always lag, and then I'll know where to say you're next up in line, as if I was I wasn't playing the game yet. So yeah, but and and the other yeah, thing I, I could I, say then is just well, why don't PlayStation just buy more servers or add more servers? Well, maybe they have an allotted amount of budget for servers, running servers of older games, right? Yeah. Compared to budget that they're putting on other services and, um, uh, well, projects, right? Yeah. That's the other <clears throat> thing. Yeah. Like how many? And I, I, you know, it's just you know. What? Yeah. Every time I hear about a company doing like this whole. We're gonna do a live streaming service. Like, I mean, I I feel as though you know, like, I would I would give Xbox a pass because you know they're using Microsoft servers, and we know how they Microsoft is great with all the whole the, their whole online whatever. So like, Game Pass runs super smooth, but it's like, you know, I don't get why every company you know, so you keep doing this, we're going to do streaming because you should know that at some point it's not going to work. Like, well, can't you download the game on Game Pass? Yes, yeah, you can. Yes, you can. Oh, yeah. You have both yeah, options. Yeah, you know, now. you can do the downloading. Oh, okay, I didn't. Yeah, know. you can do the Oh, yeah, and also the um, play anywhere. And I like, I use the mobile, the app, and it runs pretty well. I mean, like, there is some delay, but I mean, that's really more or less a lot. That's more or less with my internet connection at home. So if that's good, then the game runs pretty well. But yeah, you know, it's just like I can see why EA and you well, EA is you know kind of doing their thing with Xbox because I mean EA EA definitely does not have enough people or the manpower to do their own streaming service. So I mean, I don't <laughs> think people are going to be playing Battlefield Five every single day. So. For them, they kind of had to fold in and join someone else. But yeah, play, like PlayStation, they should be able to really invest in this because they keep talking about we're going to do online, we're going to do games as a service, we're going to do live streaming. And yet, every time they do it, it never works out. It's always like behind the times. And so it's like, I think that's why a lot of people are wanting to do their this whole, just make all the games downloadable. And then, you know, they fix their issue with bringing new players in. I think, um, well, I think it's because it's not part of their strategy, really. I think they're doing it more to keep up or try to keep up with the competition, but that their actual strategy is the gatekeeping, right? To have these exclusives, to have this premium console yeah. that is all about yeah. gaming that's you, the strategy you, they've you, always used to win right you see that was a battle way back in the day and unfortunately saying 
they still are trying to close out one another's company, which instead it's it would never happen. They're just literally pushing people to choose sides between PlayStation and the Xbox. And because of price wise and things like that. Nintendo they don't even talk about Nintendo. Nintendo is don't even give a shit about Xbox, don't give a shit about PlayStation. They're doing their thing and that's about it. So it's been a war between Xbox and PlayStation forever since they first came out. And unfortunately, see, at one point or another, Xbox was winning that battle when they first came out because of their exclusives that they were coming out first. But PlayStation is now overtaking that for the time being. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Because, you know, Xbox strategy is all about Game Pass, right? That's their strategy. It's about cloud gaming. It's all about that and that's how they see the future playstation they've always won through doing these exclusive and selling the idea of the premium console they have the premium console the premium exper gaming experience and um and so that's since they've been winning from the start like this yeah they're continue to bet on this right yeah, no, they've done a like. <laughs> I love Xbox and I, I love Sega, but yeah, no, PlayStation has done uh, a fantastic job with staying in the race. And like you know, we talk about Nintendo, right? But yeah, Nintendo doesn't even count anymore at this point. It's it's its own little thing, <laughs> like really. <laughs> um, but yeah, as... yeah, no, Nintendo has encrusted itself into this own reality bubble. Yeah, where they they can just announce something and then it will assuredly sell right exactly yeah yeah, yeah. but uh yeah no i agree with you i think i think playstation yeah, has done a great job of just um being the best for for console gaming um and really when it comes to that battle i mean that's kind of where you want to be right you want to be the best console game or uh best console out there yeah um speaking of which, yeah, though, and i mean it, it makes... go ahead go ahead pizza I don't know. I was just agreeing with y'all, you know, it makes sense for them to be, you know, but like, and like, that's, it makes them people, you know, good console. they make good games for the console, like just being able to put a disc in and play it, which is like that Sony needs to realize that like, that's what they're good at. They're good at making games where you put a disc in and you play it. Yep. They don't need to try and do all this other fancy stuff because, you know, it's like you're wasting time and money you're not really i mean I, I can't say that they're not doing anything because you know like people they're gonna buy it because i mean you know like people want to play the playstation games on the pc on their phone so they'll go with it but we've seen that you know because like um what stellar blaze on a, i don't think it's on a ps plus yet and that game sold pretty well so yeah, it you know, sold I'm, over a million in in one day. Wow. Yeah, and that's and that's without I, that shows us that Sony needs to focus on just making the games for the console. If you want to do all this backwards compatibility, then make it to where you have you can download it. Don't do all the streaming stuff because yeah. they don't need the streaming stuff. They can go without it. Like let Xbox because you know like with them it makes sense because you know like they came out as a game or uh, as a multiplayer console to begin with so for them you know it makes sense to stay that way but like Sony was a oh, um, I'm so, no i'm gonna just say this backwards compatible if they if they come out with a new console let's say playstation 6 if they allow them to have backwards compatible with any one of their games from the PlayStation 1 to the PlayStation 6. I'm telling you right here, right now on this podcast that they're going to make a triple, quadruple their money because people going to definitely want that OG console so they can play everything they have on their shelves. 
and oh. that will allow them to even be like, you know, I don't have this game anymore. I'm gonna buy another copy, and they'll pay the sixty dollars to get that game. But well, you know, go ahead. I was just gonna say you're you're right, Pizza. It has always been about games. It it will always be about games, just like movies is the same and books and all that. But the problem is that companies want a, a, a formula, right? An assured return on investment, a victory. Yeah. And so they constantly try to find ways to to do that, right? Uh, to not necessarily sell, to to put all their bets on one game, but to put their bets on a process that will make with minimal risk a return on investment especially now i think uh companies don't take any risks now right they just they take an old game from whenever then remake it or re-release it or something to and then they make sequel to that and cuz you have an assured you know fan base same thing with movies and Plus, you get new people to come in. Yeah, and I mean, you know, like I don't have I don't have an issue with people. I mean, I guess I don't know if I say I have an issue. I mean, but I I can tolerate them doing that as long as they're not trying to make it this thing where you have to go and like inconvenience yourself. If it's just a thing where you buy it and you play it, that that'll be it. But yeah, you know. A lot of companies nowadays, and you know, everyone, everybody's trying to be the next. They want to be the next Fortnite. They want to be the next Game Pass. And it's like, if that's not what you're known for, then you know, you know, it's, it's like it's like trying to do, it's like trying to do everything average without the, instead of doing one thing that you're good at. Like Xbox did Game Pass well because they were known for internet multiplayer. You know, like, I mean, you look at Halo, like Halo was, that, that's when they knew that being online, well, I guess maybe not, but you know, like being online makes sense. And that's why Game Pass feels so good to play anywhere else with PlayStation. I mean, the PS1, I'm sure they probably had some multiplayer game, but it was such a, it was like maybe a one-off. It was like one of those things where you had to buy some, some part that costs way too much money to play one game with your friends and that was it so yeah and and plus you know it it also doesn't help that most of their multiplayer games they die like that the foam star games that one died out pretty fast um when all star came out they kind of just killed it off silently for no reason <laughs> a little big plan that they killed that off dreams is done like they have all these games that you know, if they want to be multiplayer games, you need to support the multiplayer game. You know, like it's not it's not one of those things where you release it and then you're good to go. Like it's not Halo. You know, it's not Halo, it's not Call of Duty or Battlefield. It's you know, so Sony has to really put in the work if they want to be the next game pass. I'm curious yeah, though. You know, uh, if not then What's up? I was, I was curious uh, with like uh, the summer games stuff uh, coming out, right? You got the Sony State of Play. Um, like you guys are talking about what you want. Like what, what was something you'd be like looking forward to uh, in that State of Play? Like is there anything that would really like blow you away to see or anything that you're kind of hoping gets announced? Mm, you see, I want to see the reviews of Silent Hill 2. Okay. Don't get me wrong. I would love to get that game. I know it's going to be over a hundred dollars by the end of when it finally comes out and whenever it does, which will probably be around the October area, because that release is definitely going to come out on the day that you know everybody plays Silent Hill games on is that Halloween October time. Um. Yeah. But I won't get it too quick because i really want to see others people's point of view because for example i never played any of the original silent hill games i saw everybody play it and i wasn't able to get my hands on them that's why i'm going so crazy trying to find them now 
because I want to experience the OG Silent Hill games that made Silent Hill famous. Yeah, and... maybe maybe you should try it without looking at reviews, because a lot of reviews will be biased of the old ones. So true. Yeah, so true. I never even knew they had a fit of playing. Yep. Um, uh, well, yeah, they usually have. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm actually uh, <laughs> excited for that Silent Hill remake, too. Because um, if there was a game to be remade to have better mechanics and better way of playing and all that, I think Silent Hill is a good a, a good game to do that like they did with Resident Evil, right? Um, <clears throat> yeah. I'm, I just hope that the story and music and ambience stays uh, with it as well, stays as good. Um, that's mostly what I'm scared of, but... Um, uh, I think uh, the, the, there's potential there to make something great out of that, uh, basically, a Resident Evil Remake 2 kind of success, right? I'm, I'm sure it will. I mean, like, that's, you know, like, that's one of the game. that's one of those games that Sony was like, you know, like, they would, they would beat their chest on, you know, like Silent Hill, Metal Gear, um, yeah, some other game by Konami was like, like, you know, like, those are, like, those are the games that they are very much confident in. So I'd be surprised if they just said, eh, whatever, it's a, it's an old game. Who cares about it? Just release it, you know? I mean, that well, Konami don't really that, care about games anymore it's, unless it's a Pachinko machine. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm assuming that this game will not... Well, actually, let me not say that, because I feel as though they probably, they might... If, I could see that happening if they make the if they give any if this get if they give this game any sort of mo, like online login they're gonna have some type of uh, micro stuff going on because oh for that's, sure well, for sure yeah but I mean of course that's that's only if they do that I mean I don't know if they will or not cause, I mean I don't I don't know why you I don't see why you would want to do a multiplayer Silent Hill game I mean because the last one they did was terrible and that that kind of just came and went so i can't I mean, see them doing it again but most horror you know, games I, that where they try to do a multiplayer game it's horribly horribly goes resident evil tried the same right with what was it called umbrella corporation or umbrella corp something like that yeah they did yeah, also no with Operation Raccoon City. Oh, yeah, I think uh, they gave oh. me that for free in one of the, the game passes, and I'm like, uh. They're like, oh, oh, we're sorry, you paid money for this game, but you came again on our server. It's completely shut down. I'm like, okay, Dad. Oh, well, I mean, and they, 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 had, they had a really good multiplayer game for Resident Evil. It was Resident Evil 5. It was simple as you log in, you join someone, the mercenary. Like, they had they had yeah. a really good multiplayer game. I'm and not talking that about co-op. I'm, like, I'm talking about know, like, making multi online multiplayer types of things. Co-op is good in, with horror games. Yeah, and that's... And, like, you know, if that if that is the extent of what they can do that works, then just... Let it be co-op, you know, because I think that, you know, like, it kind of reminds me how, how people are wanting to see another factions mode, which we, we're not going to see that. Like, you know, Sony does not care about Last of Us enough to do a multiplayer mode. And if they do, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be one of those afterthoughts. Wait, it got canceled. Uh, they, they were working uh, on it for a while and they canceled it. No, unfortunately, say Last of Us does have a multiplayer and Last of Us won. And that was fun as hell. I played the crap out of the online portion of it, and I really enjoyed The Last of Us uh, multiplayer thing. Because all I used to do it because you still need to build, um, like your uh, bullets and your uh, healing stuff to survive in the multiplayer. It wasn't like it, they changed that much of a feature, but the fact that 
you had to basically survive and score points for your team while go to houses are uh, creating booby traps and basically play the game smart was extremely fun and I wish they did close that down because I would still be playing it. But yeah, beside that, they were making a multiplayer uh, game of The Last of Us that would be running on the same thing that The Last of Us 2 was running on in terms of engine and all that. But um, they finally shut down the project because mm -hmm. they realized like you said earlier pizza that um if they were going to commit to making this mm -hmm. multiplayer experience they would have to become a, a company that solely works on that project right that keeps it going that keeps it updated and all that and so they decided to shut it down and um want to yeah. do other projects than that a anyway that's the reason given i'm not sure it's entirely true but that was like reason given sense. yeah oh, yeah no that that's the reason why like i mean like there's i don't believe that they have like some oh you know we can't do it because it's a complex thing and yada 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 like i mean i i'll be so i would i would call them out on that because like that's not the reason they want they don't want to do it because they don't want they don't care about the multiplayer enough to put it out there. And I, you know, like if that's the case, then fine. You know, like you can, you can say that, oh, I'm sorry. You can say that you're, you are, you don't have, or I guess you can't say that, but you know, like if you at least be honest with that, then that's fine. That's cool. Understand. And then get, cause you know, when they make the single player games, they're great. They are great. We have seen it time and time again. And so, you know, like with Silent Hill 2, if they only make it a single player game, then that's awesome because we have seen time and time again that when Sony does single player games, they do it right. Everything about it, depending on how long it is, you know, like they, they knock it out. So that's, you know, if the game comes out in a single player, cool. You know, I like Silent Hill. I played four and three the most, but. You know, two is also a great one. So if it comes out and it's great, perfect. If, you know, if they want to try multiplayer, then it has to be one of those things where, you know, maybe have it be co-op. Although I don't sure, I don't think you can do that. I mean, you can't really do that one co-op because you know, it's only one protagonist that you play as all the time. So I don't know how they're gonna do it. And I think that they shouldn't even try to do multiplayer on that. I you know mean, what I think happened for the yeah. Last of Us multiplayer? I think um, they probably because you know they've been, they were working or anyway they said they were working for a long time on that project. I find it hard to believe that after working so much on a project like that, they would just now realize how much of a big task it was oh, unless it was mismanaged so i uh, i think they probably didn't have a great product and um, they saw probably what happened to redfall when it was released because they announced the cancellation that same year just a couple of months after the release of redfall and um yeah no they probably saw that they couldn't release a half-baked multiplayer without it being a uh, dumpster fire probably that's what i think but um, yeah. it's it's still a good reason what they've provided so it, i'm oh, good yeah. with it oh yeah no definitely you know and i mean yeah because you're right though like it's there is no way they could release a game like that and you know get a slam hit because you know like because i think before that game yeah, we you know we had um I don't know if I don't know if that Foam Star game came out before the cancellation or after, but um that other game, what's the other that roller blade or that roller derby whatever game, like when that came out, that was already DOA. Um <laughs> that racing whatever game, like that came yeah. out, nobody cared about it. So like 
for them to even attempt another multiplayer game. And I think that a lot of people were hoping that it's going to be just, uh, you know, a continuation of the first factions, you know, I just, you know, maybe a touch of graphics, maybe some new mechanics, nothing, nothing too crazy. Like just put out factions and add some, some color to it. That's what people were expecting. You know, like we weren't expecting it to be some, we weren't expecting it to be hell diver level of quality. We were expecting to be what we know. And like, that's fine because people still play factions to this day. They play the original one. So it's not like they want it more. They, well, sorry, they didn't want it to be like a different thing. They just wanted more of it. And Sony does, they did not seem to get that. And so that, you know, it kind of bit them, it bit them in the butt. They didn't so, listen to what the fans wanted. And they didn't see the, what they have right now, or maybe they did. And they just said, well, we're going to try and push for more. But I mean, they, someone, I think you're right though, JW. I think that someone was not leading them in the right direction. Someone should have said, hey guys, we're going, we're, we're not really making progress. Let's scale back some. And that probably would have been, that would have been a better idea because it will come out and they say, hey guys, it's faction. And that's it. End of story. The game would sell pretty well. And, you know, it's a happy ending. So what would you want to see at the PlayStation Showcase? Um, more games for PC. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's kind of... Um, that's, that's what it, I mean, would you yeah. want to see Bloodborne on PC? Well, of course. Yeah, I mean, it's... What? What games would you want to see on PC? Well, really just, yeah, mainly just Bloodborne. Cause, I mean, you know, we already <laughs> have Spider-Man on PC. We got Ghost. We got um a couple other games here and there. So it's like, I mean, actually, no, 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 no. Well, I mean, I get yeah, Bloodborne, yes. But I also want to see Infamous. Because, like, that's a game. That's a game that Sony just forgot about. Like, it came out, and they just stopped caring about it. Well, and I think it's I, because the last couple of Infamous they did did not do well at all. Like, there yeah. was the first three main ones that did really well, and then all the ones afterwards just dwindled down. Well, if it is something I have very good reviews about, that's one game that I would love to play. Um, two, if they do import it to Steam, they have to wait, have a way to play the older games without breaking them. Or, I would say, maybe remake the actual infamous games for today's graphic or pro type that's another i would love to see in today's graphic being remade yeah and you know, i mean yeah you're right though jw like it's a game that you know when it came out it wasn't like it wasn't one of their well i, I maybe it was it was like a semi-heavy hitter because you know, when I got my PS4, the first game I played was um, a snowboarding game, and that was on PlayStation and Xbox. So, you know, I wasn't really looking for these blockbuster games, but when I played it Infamous, so it was, you know, it was fun. It was different from, you know, the original PS2 and sorry, PS3 games, but it was still good. You know, like I wouldn't mind seeing that put on PC and like just to just to give it some more attention because you know I think that it was a good game. I think that Sony definitely made something that it's worth it's worth them putting on a banner. It's worth them putting it on the front page with all the other games they have. I mean they have Uncharted on there and I mean like yeah that's a good game but it also came out in the same it came out in that same era, like the beginning era with, you know, the intro. Well, oh, sorry, the beginning era with Infamous. So it's not like they can't do it, but you know, to just say, oh, well, it's not our biggest seller. We don't care about it. Like that's that's it. You know, that's a that's a pretty what's the word? It's, it's a pretty um pretty I guess weird kind of thing to do. But that's just my opinion. If I can see it on a PC, then I'll be happy. 
Yeah. Well, the, the way was... I see it is that, you know, prototype is a good shout out because it's been a while, so they could probably well, I don't mean PlayStation themselves, but the company or whoever owns prototype now could probably make a remake or another one and see if it hits and it would be a good bet compared to infamous i think where the last infamous came out on ps4 so there's still it's still relatively a recent series that died compared to prototype which i think has had longer to to well, sort of simmer in the dark. Well, technically, yeah. prototype was more for PlayStation Two, PlayStation 2, Three era, so it's a kind of a little bit of a decade now that those games were even brought up or even discussed for remake. But since you did bring out PC ports, when they said Archer was coming out on PC. I was all hyped for it. I love the Uncharted games. I love the whole Drake story behind it. I yeah, played every great. single game from when they... All of them? And they say they're not going to put them to the PC? I spent over 50 hours for Uncharted 4 and whatever else afterwards. So when I thought I was getting the whole ordeal of Uncharted, they cheated me. Yeah, yeah I, I can see that. I, I think that, you know, and I, I, I can see why you say that, though, because, you know, like that is kind of unfair to say, well, we're giving you the collection. No, you're giving you're giving me four and Lost Legacy. That like that is their that's their definition of the collection. Um, I I do know that people were arguing about how you know PlayStation can't put PS3 games on their other things because you know it's like something about the sell or whatever. And I mean like I don't I don't know if that's a good argument. I really don't care because like we have the PS3 emulator on PC and that runs pretty well. Like I can play a bunch of games on a on a relatively mid range PC pretty fine. And like that was made by just a bunch of people who don't even work for Sony. So, you know, like that that argument to say that we can't do it, I mean, they can do it. But of course, you know, that means that they have to make a team, which they do. They like this this is this is where arguing with people on internet it doesn't make sense because they they know that PlayStation has a PC porting team. They have a team that works on putting games or making games with the PC. So like they have the resources, they have the talent, they have the manpower. And so it's like they have no reason to not do it. Give it to some team give it to the Nixies team, let them knock it out, and be done with it. But, like, but Pizza and JW, all I gotta say about that is Naughty Dog owns Uncharted games. They brought games from Naughty Dog onto PC without any technical issues. So, between the PlayStation and Naughty Dog, who's being a lazier Fudger. Like, because between their two teams, they got plenty of people to take care of the ports real quick. And what about you, Mindful? What what would you like to see on the PlayStation State of Play? Honestly, just uh, not Death Stranding 2. I'd be happy if we didn't get anything more about that. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> Like you know, well, I, but we will see more of Death Stranding <laughs> too for sure at the state of play. I think. I think um, oh, what yeah, JD was saying there, like I think he nailed it. Right? We just we want to see what else this um, generation of the PS5 has to offer. Like, what other games are gonna are, are gonna be worth remembering, right, from this generation? 
And for sure, like there's been a and, there's been a nice chunk of them, but yeah, definitely, I get what he means. There hasn't been as big of an impact as maybe the PS4, or PS3 eras, right? Like, there's still there's still more shoes they need to fill, I think, for this era. Sure, I agree. Which, yeah. speaking of, uh, they on one of their previous state of play, they had announced a game called Phantom Blade Zero that looked awesome. Yeah. And I would like to see more of that and potentially a release date for that because that got me really excited. It was a new IP that looked awesome and interesting. And uh, that that's really what I want from PlayStation personally. New IPs of, of games that looks cool and interesting, right? Like Stellar Blade. Exactly. It's a new IP that did something different and uh, i will remember it for like ever that game okay a demo that i played that i wish was out in the game was pt pt (laughs) that will never happen yeah sadly the fuck out oh my god uh that oh, oh But speaking of, uh, now that I've said I wanted to see new IP, I also want to see more of Silent Hill 2 Remake, actually. (laughs) uh, (laughs) In terms of priorities, new IPs, new original IPs that look cool. Second, a remake that I think, remakes that I think that have potential and that I'm not rolling my eyes at. Because we've had many, many remakes and it's sort of, I don't know, it's sort of lost its initial charm of oh wow have you seen how they've completely changed that game now it's like oh another remake of course of that game right exactly well yeah. didn't they only introduce the trailer of Silent Hill 2 like was it like last year or something or one of the yeah games? I'd like to I'd like to see more in a release date yeah exactly a little more information about it yeah, but my main main thing is Phantom Blade Zero, and you can put a trailer of the state of play if you want, because uh, it was such an awesome trailer. Like I couldn't believe what I was see- watching on my screen, of uh, of like how the character moved, blocked, and attacked back, and all that. Uh, it really got me excited. Well, if they want to put that game out, they got to do it the way Stellar Blade did. Because I'm not sure if it was like a big announcement. It kind of just came out, and then you know, it just became it became a, it became the thing. So you know, like there, nobody really cared about it. Well, I'm sorry, let me phrase that. Like nobody really knew about the game coming out, and then when they came out, it did real. It did really good. You know, kind of like with Helldivers too, when that game came out. It wasn't like it was being advertised everywhere, but when it did, it made millions of dollars. Absolutely. So, well, it's like so you I, said, it's games that sell these things, and it's to uh, put your money and have good people that can see the potential of those good hitters, right? And it's not about how you sell your systems and all that. Yeah, so the bet. So, I mean, you know, it might be a good idea for them to just work on the game and not try to, like, you know, put all these ads out for it. Because I think that, you know, I think that that's what made those two games shine. It's like, you know, like, they didn't, nobody knew about the game. They were just working on it and then it said release it and be done with it. They weren't trying to sit, you know, they weren't trying to sell us the game. They were trying to show us that the game they made. And then we just said, we'll buy it. So I think that, you know, doing those, I can't really say a shadow drop, but, you know, like doing the thing where you just put it out there and let people kind of, you know, kind of taste it, see how it is. I think that's a better way of doing it because, you know, it's clear that Sony is not going to do it. They are not about to, you know, put all their money into that or they will and then it's going to flop. So, well, I you mean, know, they've done that for Stellar Blade, though. Because initially, Stellar Blade wasn't owned by Sony. The, they were working on it, and the, by coincidence, there was uh, one of the big heads from Sony in Korea, and 
I guess someone knew that person. They made him brought come in into the studio, and he saw Taylor Blade, which was named Project Eve at the time, saw the potential, and then it immediately made it a Sony thing. You see, that's exactly oh. how it should be done, right? Yeah. Now, now, now. To be fair, I heard a lot about Project E way back when about you know like and like that was being pushed around you know like by the fans really. But you know like that was kind of the that was kind of the new hyped up thing. So yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know it was that same game. But okay. So yeah. yeah so but but it's still. I mean, so I guess you know it was kind of hyped up, but it was more like a it was more like a it was like a fan like a fan. Um, Hype, kind of you know, like a circle, a circle thing. But sure. I mean, yeah, you know, it came out and it's still it did really great. So, you know, I think that you know, if Sony kind of keeps that momentum, which they will, because I mean, it's you know, like they got plenty of time until the PSX comes out, and even then, they're gonna have plenty of games that are just gonna come out. They're gonna push the boundaries. They're gonna be really fun games, and you know, the cycle will continue as long as Sony remembers where they came from and what made them, you know, what they are. So that's that's kind of my closing argument on it. Thank you. Pizza said it perfectly. Those words exactly right there. That those words right there is they need to know where they came from. Because they just they started this up but, uh, you know, we supported it and we went through it like, you know, extremely crazy in one way or another to, you know, support what we wanted to support. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, if they can if they can do that, hey, we're we're gonna be doing we're gonna we're gonna be sitting pretty. But I mean again I have, you know, I I don't own anything from PlayStation nowadays. I mean, I got, you know, a couple PC games, but I mean, that's about it. You know, so I'm sure, you know, they'll keep doing their thing and I'll be watching them and I'll just be like, okay, you know, you got, you know, they got it taken care of. So I'm not worried about them. You know what, Pizza? I, I had a PS3 emulator and, you know, I was going through the ROMs. I had a bunch of games, but fortunately, say you know, some of them were really extremely laggy, and that was the Uncharted games. So that's why I went out of my way for the PlayStation Three, the OG one. I paid like three fifty for the system and a couple of games, and now I'm kind of like I need to put a pause. Because I picked up some really different games that I did not even hear any commercials about them. Um, they were that popular in one way or another. But we went completely off topic. <laughs> <laughs> That's all good. Uh, my phone, you there? Yeah, I'm here. You fell asleep? No, no, can you hear me? I've I've just uh, yeah yeah okay. uh, I've just put the, the um, Phantom Blade Zero trailer if anyone's interested or to help mindful with the editing. <laughs> it um, sure does actually of what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. In, in the basement banter chat, uh, uh, th that's basically my main thing. Like, I, there there wasn't any new IPs. Other than that, that they've announced in the past that seemed Thank noteworthy, you. or at least that I remember. But uh, I would like to see more of, like I said, new IPs. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Like, imagine if every game came out, well, not every game, but you know, like, imagine a big chunk of games came out like Stellar Blade, like, just came out as fantastic games. Like, that's a win. <laughs> like, that's the yeah, best. Yeah, exactly. That's the best we can hope for, right, as gamers. Um, so, yeah, I, I hope this turns out to be another Stellar Blade for you. You see, like I was telling you, uh, my fault. I, uh, actually, this is on GOG, JW, if you want to pick it up. It is a PlayStation 3 game. It's called Stranglehold. 
Um, I think it was like uh, four bucks on GOG, or I could put the link in uh, lines. Sure. Like Heavy Rain was another good game. Yeah. Um, Heavy Rain was that good. I had to pick up a physical copy, even though I do have it digitally. I still wanted to pick up the physical copy, so I know I could possibly get um, you know some kind of like uh ordeal in the near future if i ever need to sell anything and um, well i i think that's also part uh, of the problem why of what we don't see enough new games is that we have a tendency to look too much into all the past and older games right and then so and then companies will sell you that or try to sell you that same old game newer so they can make more money. No, I kind of agree with you on that uh, one. Because, you know, when you ask this question, what you would like to see on the PlayStation State of Play, yeah. often people will talk about a remake of that game or a sequel of that game or... A... So I don't know of, true. of that series, right? Yeah. But you need to expand your horizons, I guess. I don't know. To just uh, expand the... Um... I mean, it's the easy thing too, right? Oh, what what is my favorite... What are my favorite game series, whatever? Those. Okay, well, I want more of that. Yeah. Right. But actually, what we want is more new stuff it's just we don't know what to call it or what new what more of new we actually want right we just want something new and different yeah you're absolutely sure right? it's same people that are complaining about like the there's too many remakes and all this other stuff it's like yeah but then exactly what you said when you get asked that question what's the first thing out of your goddamn mouth <laughs> I want. But it's also why everybody goes to indies as well which is True. funny because they're, they're sort of doing the same thing as AAA games, but in a different way. And what I mean by that is AAA games will resell the same game with the same brand and all that. Indie games will make a new game that is a, very similar in a style of an older game that you've played and that they've played, that they like, right? Yeah. It's just it doesn't have the name and... It has a, probably a new mechanic that w hasn't been used like, I don't know, you can stick to walls or something, and then it's used throughout the whole game, right? Yeah. But otherwise, it's still a Metroidvania, like any other Metroidvania, for example. No, very and true. I, I know, I think that's what bothers me with indie games. They get lo a lot of praise, but I often find they base themselves on older stuff that already exists and then there's so many of them so many indie games that do the same sort of similar style but slightly different type of thing type of game or whatever whether it's a metroidvania or roguelike a, a, a experience of three hours type of thing and it's it all have the same sort of vibe right and they sort of all blend in for me and it's not interesting yeah i agree with you a lot of time they get you know praised as being original <laughs> out of the box thinking it's like no it's not that crazy actually <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah uh this was a this was a nice healthy one again <laughs> Um, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you guys were able to um, join on. Uh, definitely Sheila and JW. Uh, I know you guys are right there from the get-go, so thank you guys very much for staying up for so long. And Pizza, as always, thank you for hopping in. I appreciate it, buddy. I know you got a busy life, so it's nice to be able to make uh, some time to hop in on here. Um, but yeah, I hope I you... felt for a minute you were going to forget him. <laughs> no, no, can't forget Pizza. <laughs> I was like, you're good. Right now I'm at work, and I'm at work too, actually, so I'm kind of just, you know, doing my little walkthrough, and then I'm going to be done with work, actually. I think when we hang up off here, I'm going to be done with work, so I'm good. Nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> cool. 
But yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. And uh, yeah, again, thank you for all taking part in this. You too. Bye, everybody.